Today, we are going to be uh, fixing this. What am I doing wrong? There we go. Um, today, we're going to be tinting this beautiful uh, Model Y. We're doing ceramic all the way around. Uh, 50 on the windshield, 50 on the front doors, 35 on the rear. And it's going to look good. Strap in. It's going to be a long one. Oh, good coffee, too. Elements about running robot That's what I forgot. Headphones. There we go. <laughs> that, and I don't think I did fog machines either. Let me go plug those in. Let me go plug those in. Jared Burner, what's up? This will be good. I agree. I should have everything charged. We've been filming some videos lately, which is a very good thing. Good morning. I'm so glad to tell you I opened my new tint studio last month. Dang. Oh, that's super cool, congrats. That's awesome to hear. Oh wait, no, it's not this one. It's this microphone. <laughs> that's super cool, congrats, man. That's exciting times for sure. Okay, then this clip's here. Did you guys see the video yesterday? I have fun making that one. It was silly. It was one of those weird ideas. Like, so I've been wanting to do a static cling video for a minute. I just wanted to play around with the stuff. I didn't know what to do with it though. And then I had that idea and I was like, oh. It worked out. It worked out way better than I, than I would have thought. It was well edited, thank you. Would you believe I did all that on my phone? Oh my God, it's so much easier editing on my phone, I can't even tell you. The hard, you wanna know the hardest part about editing on a phone? Is getting the files to your phone. <laughs> that, just that. So I've got like a, uh, I got a lightning to, uh, SD card adapter, and then Apple's files system. It works, but for whatever reason, it's been hung up on transferring like really large files. So with the, with the new camera, those things have been, uh, those files like, are like, I don't know. I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes of videos is like probably over, no, it was probably like 20 gigs, probably like a minute per gig of data. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, if it was, uh, if it was Android, it'd be a cakewalk to transfer a file, but that's one of the things iPhone doesn't do so well. But I finally figured out a way to copy them into like a subfolder and now I can actually get a progress bar. I don't know, it was really weird. This is all super nerdy stuff. But what would happen is put in the SD card and then go to files and then save the videos to my camera roll and the smaller files would save and the larger files would you know, take a little bit longer, but eventually they would save. And then I was running into an issue where they just weren't saving at all. I'd leave my phone there for over half an hour and it still wouldn't save. And none of them ever gave me a progress bar. So I'd have no idea if it's like, okay, is this working or not? Finally figured out a way to get it to work.
But yeah, that whole thing. If you guys are ever into editing, VN editor, there's not much happening yet. It's, believe it or not, free. I can click on my project. Here's my whole timeline. And this is 4K30. Um, so it skips a little bit when you're scrubbing, but when you're playing it, it's super smooth playback and everything. I can add stuff, I can cut, transitions, everything that I want to do. Everything that I do for an editor, super, super easy. All right, so we're going to jump into this one. But yeah, I've, I've basically, what, I, what my goal has been is to make everything convenient. That way it happens more. Work on quality after. There, this should, this should be okay. Filters. Um, yeah, I think that's okay for now. Super! Hang on. Is this working? Where's the things? Yeah, they are really slow today. Oh, there it is. Robert! Robert Kane super chatted $9.99. Ooh. Any advice on a 22 Honda Pilot front quarter glass? Dang. Robert, thank you so much for the 10. Uh, there's like two ways to do it. You either take out the entire glass, um, which Patrick actually has a video on how to do that. Um, I managed to get a pretty decent install with like a with like a panel stick. So the way that that rubber presses up against the glass, if you can, if there's, you can find a way to basically, you, I did this with like a panel stick where uh, on like the front edge of it, on the inside, I kind of wedged a stick and it kind of pulled the seal back and freed up some space. I don't have, like there's no, super, there's no way to make that window super easy, but you gotta figure out a way to free up a little bit of space. Some people have done on tighter quarter windows, they have done, uh, God, what has it been called? They've done like 10 gauge wire, I think, and they kind of pushed it into the gasket and it frees up some space. I don't know if you can do the same thing on that. I've only had one of them. And that's what I ended up doing. Thank you for the 10. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so we're gonna open this whole thing up. I am going to uh, latch the windows. We're gonna open this dude up. And then there's one interior panel um, that I remove, and that's gonna be this one. I usually do this ahead of time, but I've done it a couple times. So pull from in this area. These are just pull, push clipped on. The only reason that I remove this is to free up space in here and also cover up the uh, electronics a little bit too. I don't know if it's a requirement on, on something like this, but the, see there's just a bunch of little push clips. This all pops off. It's probably one of the easiest panels ever to, to remove. There's just a couple of modules here, um, but the main reason, like I, I wouldn't have known that unless I had taken this off earlier. Um, that plastic kind of presses against the glass and it comes in. So in order to kind of shift the film down a little bit, tuck it up in here, um, and then you get all the space to work with at the bottom, removing that helps a bunch. And then I saw those scary looking little modules and I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna cover these. But I haven't heard any bad, anything bad about tinning the rear, so it's probably okay. Then we're gonna go through, we're gonna latch every one of these guys.
So I don't often remove stuff, but when it makes the job significantly easier, which I think, I don't know. There was one I kind of wanted to ask about. I saw some people do the exterior trim on a, I want to say it was a Model 3. Might have been a Model Y. Um, if anybody can refresh my memory around that. That would be really, really cool. Um, they removed the outside one, and then that frees up the glass so you can push it this way a little bit, which makes, honestly, all the sense in the world. There's a way to free up some space on any of these. It's to literally push back a little bit on the glass, and when you can free that up. It's not really 100% necessary, so kind of just depends on the tightness, and this one seems fine. Just all, any extra space, always helps. So if it makes your job that much easier and it was real simple to do, that's when I, that's when I remove some little things. Other than that, it all stays. It all stays alone. What roll are you? 35. Um, so we are going to be doing, we got to hunt, oh, <laughs> I think we got to hunt down some 50%, huh? So that's a 35. Uh, my 50 ceramic, where are you? It's one of these rolls. Pro Nano, 50%. It's this guy right here. Yes. And then, do we have a short roll of 50 that always helps. So we got a real short roll of 50. That is done. And then... What are you? No, that's not 50. I was just checking. Sometimes I got a small roll. Well, I did. And I either set it down somewhere and misplaced it, or I'm just completely out. So let's get this thing wiped down. We're gonna do these one at a time. I like the red on this. I've done so many black and white versions it's always nice to see a bright color. The red and black look super good. But I totally get the white and black aesthetic. It's what I typically buy. The outside seal pulls straight up. That's on the Model Ys too, huh? The inside seal looks easier, but requires screw removal. Okay, mm. there's our piece. Grab underneath the backside. Need to seal while simultaneous prying up on the front side with the bone tool. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Thank you, I appreciate that. I thought it was... It, it's always funny to me when some of those things can be removed um, on the outside of the vehicle and they have no screws holding them there. They're just like pressure fit in clips. <laughs> Saw that video of, uh, God, what was it? A Hellcat with the fender flares. They're just, they're just clipped on 
So you can you can literally walk up to the car and pull it off, and it's like, wait, what? Really? Oh, damn. Surprisingly easy. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a video. I just forgot which one it was. They're probably the same, though. There's so many similarities here. All right, we're getting our blades set. Mm -hmm. There's that. I should find like a plastic knife I actually like better, but this one's been doing awesome. Fifty. I like fifty. It's gonna be a lot of people that say fifty is light. When you when you do fifty on the front door, actually, it's what I have on my blazer right now. I have fifty on the front doors, and then I have fifty on the windshield. It's been good. I've been, uh, so from the class, um, we had we had carbon rolls. Um, so there was 50% left on one of the windows. And I've kind of been, I was like, hmm, I've never really drove with 50 carbon long term or anything. So I left it on there. And it's been good. Ceramic's obviously better for heat. But it's just a good all around film. Okay, so we're gonna move that over here. Right, tuck this down a good ways. You ever get the rear windows tinted on the Sienna? <laughs> no, and I haven't said this. Uh, unfortunately, we, we sold it. Because we're in the middle of getting a house. So I was going to, and then, uh, nope. So the, uh, sorry, you know, I think I did this out of order. Let me do the side edge. I cut the top edge. Let me do the side edge first. It's easier to line up if I'm doing things that way. So we've been we've been running for like a while and wanted to wanted to get into a house obviously but this was like mm, God when did we get that? I forgot when we got that van now. 
I think we got that van in like o October or something. I don't know. We really like it. We want to. We'll get another one. Um, but then uh, in November, like we were we were looking around at at houses and stuff um, because we don't want to. The whole reason I moved to the place that I moved to was so I could tint from home, and I can't tint from there. So now it's like, okay, so where are we actually gonna live now? So we were, we were looking around, and then we stumbled into a, a home builder And things just kind of kept rolling from there. And much later on, they're like, hey, so we're going over everything. And uh, unfortunately, you just took out an expensive van. So if you want to move forward with this, then you can't keep the van. And I'm like, no. Very sad. But we'd rather have a house than a van, so we'll go through this, and then sometime later we'll get a van. There we go. And this we will cut here. Ever done a rear glass and a 96 Viper? I have not. I may have tinted one Viper. I just don't think it was a 96, unfortunately. So I don't have any, I, on that one, I don't have any good advice. Uh, how do you choose a good ceramic film? Some say you should choose a higher TSER um, value when looking for one. Yeah, TSER is always a good number to go off of. IR numbers too play a factor in that. So those are like the two most important numbers to look at. But here's the thing. It's a real quick test for you. Get some films, like get some films that sound good on paper. Get those films and then play around with them and put them on your car. And it's always good to compare them to like what you would pick as a secondary. So then you got a good, good gauge of what's out there. But 100% always, always play around with some film that you're going to install on customer car and just run it through its paces. Because there will be things that happen with that film that you won't necessarily expect. You'll hear lots of good ratings, good reviews. You'll get it. And then you really know what it's like. So this happens with uh, this happens with any film. Happens with any film that I'm I'm gonna look up. I don't care what company it is. Um, most trusted, most well known. Geo even. I still get the films, put them on my car first, and then if I like them, then I offer them. If I don't like them, I don't offer them. Because if I'm not gonna like it. My customers probably are not going to like it either. So this one rounded just a hair. <laughs> yeah, that knife. That knife was in the uh, 
was in the latest. Been using it for a while. The thinner blade helps me out, honestly. If you want a real easy, reliable way to cut a top edge, get the thinner NT blades. But just use it for the top edge. Always use a stainless for the rest for the rest of the glass. But those blades are awesome. I couldn't believe that film actually shrunk though. That static cling film. That I think that's what surprised me the most. I remember seeing some other videos on it. Um, I don't know if people thought to even try and shrink it, but I, I legitimately had no idea. When I put that stuff on the window, some like maybe it would shrink the other way, or I really thought Hey, it's static cling. It's probably just meant for like flat windows. Nope, that that shit that shit shrunk beautifully. I was expecting it to stretch like final, not shrink. I know it. Put some heat on it, shrunk together. I was like, no way. Now I kind of want to, like, you could do an entire car with it at that. You're not going to be able to shrink it the same. Uh, you just have to be lighter about the way that you shrink it. Like, more of like a pull shrink method is, guess, what, what I'm trying to say with it. It's, it'll be tough. It's, and another thing that I noticed with it is as soon as you take it outside, um, it gets warm real fast. So whenever it's warm, it stretches. So everything I did in here was with the glass cold. Later on, playing around with it outside a little bit, um, it stretched out. It stretches out like when you when you tug on it and whatnot. So. But I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a film that anybody's gonna install seriously. <laughs> Doesn't exactly. It's got it's got a texture. To the film, so besides all the water that was in there, it's not gonna it's not gonna lay flat. So maybe there's a better one out there. I don't know. But as far as a, like, um, we had to reshoot one bit from it. So I had the, the piece sitting here on the board. And then the next day I came in, grabbed the piece off, put it back on my window, filmed the extra bit. And I was pleasantly surprised. It's like, oh, this is great. You can just dust it off. <laughs> kind of just changes the way you look at film. You should do pre-cut static clings. But you have to do them short. That's the only way that insulation is easy. Because the, the hardest part about door windows is like tucking things into the side and trying to keep everything clean while you're doing that. So the more that you can, more, space you give yourself, the easier it is to tint any window. So one of those things, easy peasy.
the window washers above the window. So it's oh, so it sprays on the window. <laughs> Nah, it's too too much work. Just take uh, just keep a little spray bottle. Keep a little spray bottle in your car. You need to pull that film down for any unknown reason. Give your window a little spritz. Roll it back up. You're good to go. <laughs> I need to make that into a TikTok. I think, I think TikTok would appreciate that. Did I what now? By that eight inch fusion? Oh, no. No, I didn't yet. Um, I was not the one to go out to Sun Distributing this week, so I totally forgot. I have to order one of those. that. I'm going to tuck this one down, slide it over. Too far down. Back up. This nice and close. Cool. Nice. But yeah, especially on this window, or the windshield, I'm gonna wish I had an eight inch fusion squeegee. We'll get one, one of these days. Yeah, Model 3 has the same style. They're tall too. They're just like these. There's so many similarities between those cars, between Model Y and Model 3. Ugh. Come on. There we go. Can you explain? Yeah, I do shrink. Um, I've got three more, three more door windows to do. So these ones are gonna be a little bit tougher to explain. Shrinking the indi individual fingers is gonna be the easiest bet. That's the way that I started because I didn't know how to do it this way. So this is kind of, for, for shrinking, this is kind of jumping into the deep end, but it's such a fast, easy way to shrink. You just gotta know what you're looking for. So I'm trying to figure out what, how to, how to best explain it. And I'm getting a little better at that. This looks good. Because there's sometimes I'm gonna pull the tint. There's sometimes I'm gonna pull the tint away a little bit farther, depending on how much there is to shrink. But most door windows, 
I didn't put tape down. I only prepped this one. So, yeah, my shrinking is going to change a little, not really change. There's just going to be more. So if there's more to shrink, I'm going to start at a little bit of a higher point. But on most windows, you don't need to shrink. You don't need to shrink very much. So if your first car that you try and shrink is like a Corvette, you're going to have a hard time. Subaru Crosstrek, that's going to be much easier to do. You don't have to shrink much. But you're going to, like the problem is just you got to look for the right things. So yeah, I'll walk through it a little bit. They need 35. Do I have 35 in a short roll? Let me see. Yay, water. <sighs> Carbon Pro Nano 35. Of course I do. There we go. So we're doing 35 over the factory rear. that. I'll flip that over. Top is clean. Good. Let's flip that over. <laughs> hey! I don't know what's wrong with the alerts. I gotta switch all those over to the same program that the fog machine runs after, because the fog machine is on point. Everybody else lags behind. RGC Super Chat RGC. $10. Give us a tutorial on shrink on the board, dude. RGC, thank you for the 10. using a potter on frameless windows. Well, that just goes against every reason. Like, it makes more sense to use them on frame than frameless, honestly. Okay, but uh, let me see how much there is to shrink on this one. And then I can do it on the board as well. So, the rear doors have less to shrink than the front doors, but I just want to see kind of by how much. It's a lot more curve in those front doors. There's not a ton on, I mean, there's some on the back, but it's not, not crazy. So it's called snap shrinking. And I think it gets that term from like the way it snaps back down to the window. Tinters aren't all that clever with names. But I'm a little surprised it wasn't just called curl shrinking or something. So I'll take it. that one. So let me finish up these corners and then we'll shrink it. A little bit, a little bit. Straight. I don't have a great board. I'd like this to be a little bit wider, but as long as I can put the film on there, I can shrink it. So the thing is, most, 
most windows don't need very much shrinking. They just need some shrinking. The frame, with frameless, the whole edge needs to be perfect. Well, that's why I like hand cutting it. Plotter, like the way to handle it with the plotter is you overlap it and then you file it, or you just go with whatever the plotter gives you. If plotters gave me perfect edges, I would just use plotters all the time. It makes the most amount of sense. I still hand cut a lot of my edges because plotters don't give me <laughs> amazing edges. <laughs> they're, they're decent, they're just not as good. So, For the types of uh, for the types of clients that I bring in here, I just you know putting a little extra time and hand cutting it, and I don't try and rush everybody out the door. That's why I always keep doing it this way. Ooh, this is gonna be this is gonna be good. So, the, I don't know, it's always funny how the plotter's an endless, endless debate topic. Whoa, what the hell? Okay, that doesn't make any sense to me. What did I do wrong? <laughs> As I was talking about plotter versus hand cutting. <laughs> I don't know why they turned out very wavy. That doesn't make sense to me. Let me just make sure this all is tacked down up here. That's probably what it was. Because it didn't skip. I know I got a good cut. Oh, you're spoiled. With our graph tech and DAP. See, okay, you have the exception to the rule. DAP is the only program that ever gave me hope in plotter top edges. They did a fantastic job. Daps in a walled uh, in a walled garden though, so you you can't you can't use dap unless you're all expel. So I can I can appreciate what you get from there. But there's a lot of people that would want to be a part of um, Team Expel that just can't. So um, I'm pretty sure there's a there's got to be an Expel dealer around here too. I think Midnight's an Expel dealer, so I probably that probably means I can't even be one. That would be another one. Is like, so let's say you're like, yeah, I love it. I want to join. And then there's another Expel dealer within a certain territory. You got to move. Is Core not that good? That's what we use. Um, so I haven't tried, I haven't been able to try Core yet, but I, I've used Lumar back in the day. And from talking to people, it sounds like it's not a whole lot different than what it used to be. The software would change and be more intuitive, but as far as the patterns, 
I know they would be pulling an old database. Like, there's no sense to redo an early 2000 Impala. <laughs> Because it's just not a, it's not a new car anymore. But all the new cars that they would bring in, I'd imagine they have a better process for doing them. Oh, God damn it. I just shrunk this. You guys distract me. Okay. So I'm going to maybe do this on the, on the board, too. I still have some more to shrink. And I've got the other two to shrink. On an average window, this is what we're going to call this right now. On an average window, the way that I snap shrink is keep your, a good gauge for you is to keep the back of your knuckles against the trim. Pull back on the film and you get it to pull back and stop short of your side. So you just wanna pull it back about this far. And then all you're doing is focusing that heat right at the, literally the very bottom. So your heat band is like this like it's a circle, half circle, like just point it right down at the bottom edge right there. Get the hottest spot right on that edge. And all you're looking for is a little bit of heat and you can go slow with this and you're just waiting till that film starts to tighten up and you're just moving that across. And then you're gonna notice this starts to get more and more pronounced. Once you curl it, once you get it to bow a little bit, spray it, push it down, and then see how this bottom edge lines up on the glass. You should see some little tension waves in here, so that's kind of what all these are. That's good. All we're trying to do is knock the fingers out of it. So I got a few more little fingers here. I'm gonna pick this, I'm gonna pick this back up. Literally gonna Heat up that little area there until it curls, then boom, there we go. That's shrunk. So there's not a lot to it. You're just looking for the right things. More often than not, people would take a heat gun. They would get real close, and they go, and they cook it, but they have no idea what they're looking for. Just back up some with your heat gun, hold it off the glass a little bit, and then just warm up that bottom edge. And then check it. And you'll be able to like physically see something happening with the film. It's subtle, but you'll be able to see it starting to shrink and tighten up. So I'm going to try and remember earlier on. Um, so when I say most windows, I'm talking about like most modern cars that you see on this channel. So that could be Malibus, Impalas, BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, um, Kia, um, many, many uh, Cadillac, many automakers are in this like you know, they're kind of in this in-between where they're, or this pretty average. They, they don't overly curve their glass. So all those cars, you just basically shrink a, the same amount. You're just, and, and there's a gauge. Like, you can over shrink it a little bit, you can under shrink it a little bit. So you don't have to get anything like spot on perfect. But something like a Tesla, the glass is taller and it's a little bit more rounded. So it's one of the more unique automakers Jacob out there. Jacob Boardman Leach super shattered one dollar and twenty five cents. It's three a m n z. Finally get to see a stream. <laughs> Jason, thank you for the uh, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate that. 3 a.m. Staying up late. 
This is probably gonna take. It's probably gonna take a few hours. Gonna be up late tonight. But yeah, the best thing that I was able to do that helped people kind of get it at the class was with all this shrinking stuff, you can take your time. You control the heat with distance. If you want it to shrink really slowly, pull that heat gun fat, like farther back and just take your sweet time. And then you'll start to basically get it closer and closer until you know what you're looking for. And then once you understand what you're looking for, you can move much faster. And I, there's uh, one guy at the class. We were shrinking the blazer and I think a lot of it started to click as I went through it again with the blazer because he shrank the first half pretty slowly, but he had, like we had done some shrinking practice earlier. And people tend to kind of like run back into the same problems that they were. So I'll kind of show them what to do. They'll practice some, I'll come back, and then they'll kind of fall back into the same problem that they were having before. So a reminder and adjustment. Then they'll start changing their habits a little bit. And, and the biggest one is watch what the film is doing first and then smooth things out with a card. But the card is just an organization tool. So once you can kind of force yourself to like slow down, pay attention to what the film is doing, then it'll kind of click into place and then you'll be able to move a lot faster with your shrinking. So with snap shrinking, it was really like, okay, we're just gonna slow down, we're gonna move this way back, and then we're gonna wait until that film starts to curl. So move a little closer, move, there it goes. You can see it starting to react and then just slowly move that heat gun across a little bit. And then check it. What do you think about Flex Film? Is it as good as GeoShield? Uh, they definitely have their their pros and cons. I just don't like the company, so I haven't looked at their film in a long time. Would you snap string something really curved like a C8 window? Not in the same way. So I take some of those principles, but it definitely doesn't look as straightforward as just curling the bottom. You, there's more film to shrink there. To be honest, you could probably set up a C8 window like you do a back window and probably tackle it that way pretty quickly. We just don't look at doors that way. So the front doors on this one and, and back windows, on, or like the back doors on this one too, are, are kind of similar. These are just bigger pieces of glass. They curve more. I've seen a tint world use flex film. And so it must be pretty good. <laughs> okay, so let me cut this one. Secret is the shrinking. Shrinking's part of it. I always think the installation is the harder part. 
Some windows are, are very easy to tint, though. But to this day, I can still shrink a lot of stuff very quickly and easily, and then I'll still have to redo it three or four times because it just didn't look right when I installed it. Okay, so let's get this lined up. I think being comfortable with the tools is key to tinting. I've trained people that always hold the heat gun awkward, but once they get it down, it just kind of clicks. Yeah, confidence, confidence is huge. So when you're new, you want to be careful and you don't want to mess anything up, but that will cause you to mess things up. when you get super frustrated at it and you're just like, ah, then you kind of go at it with like an F you attitude. And then that typically, that, that can actually work out better. <sighs> All right, so let me do these. What happened to the red dot? <laughs> it's here. You don't use red dots anymore. Nope. When I use a blade for one cut, I don't use the other ones anymore. I don't have two of them with me right now. <laughs> it's, it's all or nothing. That's always funny. No, I I suppose I should make a that should be the next that should be the next one. Or that should be the next video. I should do one about knives. Um but we can We can focus a little bit more on how to cut out a top edge alongside of it, so it'll work out really well. I don't know what to call it, though. I'm not sure I picked the best title on my last video. I think it's pretty strong, but it's not performing very, very well right off the bat. Sometimes they need to cook for a little bit before they do, though. It's a solid video. I just don't know if I titled it right. Thumbnail was also kind of a tough thing, too. How do you show self-tinting windows? In a picture. Okay. <laughs> Puts red dot in mouth. Why is it so spicy? You just can't rest the metal part on the film. Yeah, that's why the plastic blade makes more sense. It helps. 
because being able to press the film up against the glass while you're making your cut, it helps. And then the blade that I use, um, this blade, so thin, thin and super sharp being the key here, dude, those, all those things together make it way easier and consistent. I handed it to numerous new people and they had an immediately easier time. Hey! RGC super chatted $10. Thanks for that info. The dude. Okay. So, on this one. So, you see this... This big old finger right here. This is, uh, we'll, we'll put, I think the back window, we'll probably put over on the board for our GC here. Um, when I see fingers that are this big and they come up this high, like it's halfway up the glass. This isn't the most curved door window, but it's reasonably curved here. So if I take my film and I just try and curl it at the bottom, well, one, it's still very wet here. So whenever the fingers are kind of smaller, like this, you can sweep this down, sweep some of the water out, and that'll allow you to immediately start shrinking it. But when the whole piece is wet, I can only comfortably scoot these fingers down so far before they're going to crease. So there's a lot of extra water in here. So I kind of need to dry it out some as I'm shrinking it. So for these ones, I will go a little bit higher up. I'll start warming it up here. I'm just lifting it off the glass. This is essentially like shrinking a back window at this point. I'm just, I'm waiting for it to tighten up some in here, and then I'm dropping that down to the next section, getting it to tighten up some, dropping it down to the next section, getting it to tighten up a little bit more, until basically I'm getting these higher points to then flatten up against the window a little bit more. So how do I know if I got it to work? It, when it's wet, it's, it's definitely messier too. So I'm gonna take my squeegee, I'm gonna squeegee down, the parts that I shrunk, and then I'm gonna look at it. These are substantially smaller now than they were before, but they're still sit just as high off the window. There's just more now in this area. This is not something that you're just like, if you're having snap shrink before and you, and you get a piece of glass like this, it's just gonna be a little weird. And then here, it's gonna take longer to get it to curl, really because it's, it's very wet. So then I'll squeegee all this down, hit the little bottom edge here a little bit more. That's where to get that to tighten up right at the very end. And then we should be we should be good on that. That is not... Like, how do you snap shrink? That is not like a very straightforward example on this one. So if you've been snap shrinking and then you come to this one, then you kind of know, you know what to look for already but you need to start on something a little bit simpler, and that's most regular cars. Just like, I wanna shrink my first back window, how hard is a Corvette to do? It's like, well, if it's the flat Stingray one, that one will be easy. Everything else, everything else kinda sucks. So that's why I'm not, like, I'll, I'll look at the back window again. I forgot about the board. I use the yellow reload blade for windows. 
The only thing I don't like about the yellow was how rounded that top is, because I have them, and I've tried it. I just wish it was a little bit flatter at the top, but it's a really cool knife. How's everything today? Good. Things are good. Go ahead and clean this guy off. Let's run the water out of here. Should be pretty good. Does it look any better? Yes, that looks fresher. Dun, dun. Did you get another shelf? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Third one. Yep. Hopefully it's got the parts. It does. Okay, good. RGC super shattered ten dollars. Wow, that's technique snap shrink. Oh my the god! Food. Did you hear that? He was like, "Wow." <laughs> that was probably the funniest thing that I've ever heard from the robot voice. Wow! But RGC, thank you for another ten. I appreciate it. Yeah, most snap shrinking. Um, I mean, just look at just look through the library of cars that that I've had to do on this channel. Most windows are very similar, but you do have those unique pieces of glass. They're just taller. They're more curved, so you got to approach them a little bit more differently. I just kind of take what I know with snap shrinking. And I bring that into something like this. But this is not how I started when I first when I first started. Somebody came into the shop and they were like, yeah, they were doing this at that other shop. And I was like, whoa. That's cool. I like that better. I'm gonna start doing that. And it was just kind of a little bit of a learning curve on that one. Recently saw the Kona end stream and don't know how you kept your calm. <laughs> Dude, I'm so annoyed. That's like the second Kona N and it's an easy card to tint. Like there's nothing there's nothing about that car that should be difficult, really. The hatch area a little bit. It's just amazing how uh <laughs> how many dumb little problems I had. But when everything goes well, it should be most of the time. Maybe the third one, maybe the third one that we get. I didn't think I'd even get a second one, but that was cool to see. I like those cars. Ooh, 
I am far enough over. I thought I had to go a little bit farther over. Very nice. Very nice. Perfect. I've had quite a few of these Model Ys now at this point. Been getting so many Hyundais now at this point. For me, it's like, well, it makes sense because I'm in the Detroit area and also near plants, but lots of trucks, lots of Rams. can't find anybody local that'll do my Model 3 in one piece. What? That's shocking to me. That to me is like there's a, you know, there's enough competition for window tinting. So it's always surprising to me It's always surprising to me when, when there's no shop that won't do something. There we go. <sighs> they want to use two pieces. Well, they're right. So it is a 60 inch roll and you have to flip it up sideways. But it's like, that's a challenge worth taking on. That's a skill worth having. If you can't do a Model 3 sideways, you're turning away a lot of potential business. So, you show the top edge, yeah. I'm, like right up here. I'm just trying to get this a little bit closer to the edge. It's like reasonably locked up on me now. So if you get really close, you'll be able to see a little gap. And then I try and keep that consistent. I try and keep that consistent throughout. But that's the thing, like if your cuts are smooth and you get it, like, I mean, let me think, how am I trying to say this? You can, when you cut your top edge, you can get that as close to the edge of the glass as you can possibly get it. As long as when you do this, it doesn't curl back, you're fine. So the front notch, I'm gonna let dry it's overhanging a little bit. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to trim it a little bit closer. The other front shrinking and sewing. What about the front notch? Oh, on this one. So this one's a little bit shy, um, but what happens is this glass drops back down. So I try and butt that up as close as I can. This is a situation you're never going to have this window practically in. So I'd like to keep it all the way to the close. This is just a little bit shy right here. When that's on this, it's definitely not a bad thing. You just try and I just try and aim to get it a little bit closer when I can. So. When I open this window, the glass drops and it stays in line with the top of this. Um, so you're never practically going to see that area, literally, unless you open the door and you latch it. 
and then cause the whole thing to go extra high. Kind of like when you roll down a window and you like shift it back and forth and you might see a gap on a side, something like that. Like you're never practically going to notice that. Unless you kind of set up a situation to see it. So it's open, that part's open to, uh, to a little bit of interpretation. Okay, so one thing I learned yesterday is that nobody tells you Wagner heat guns are much better than others. I learned that the hard way. Interesting. I've used like a handful of cheap heat guns, and I've always liked the Wagners the best out of the cheap heat guns, but I don't really compare them to all that many. But they're, they're like legitimately well put together little guns. We just abuse the hell out of them. So like, they're like, oh, it died in six months or it died in eight months or whatever. Like you're just, when you're using it on like every car <laughs> and then you're dropping them on the floor, like these little suckers, they go through a lot of abuse and they're just, they're not made, made for that, but they're very well put together guns. Wagner heat guns blow up. Um, I've had one. I've had one spontaneously combust. It was sitting there. I had used it probably about half an hour earlier, and it was sitting there on the ground. Then all of a sudden, it <laughs> But that was one. That was one for me. It hasn't done it in a very long time. I've got four more sitting there. I burnt the crap out of the film yesterday because it was my first time using that Wagner. Those suckers, they get hot. They get very hot. But most, most, okay, like, you only have so much power to play with. Most heat guns and stuff, like you're on a 15 amp circuit, maybe a 20, but most are gonna aim for a 15 amp circuit. So they can only really get so hot without blowing breakers. Cannon. Let me, let me fix this. Fix this up, do. I've had spark shoot at the tent. Yeah. <laughs> the older models especially. They had one, uh, the last generation with like a, a longer metal end to it. Those things would gradually melt and start blowing chunks and stuff. I haven't had these ones quite do that yet. But it definitely wouldn't surprise me. You, we put them through their paces. Attempting to shave the edges, but it went terribly. I know the feeling. That happens to me still. That's why, like, there's some things that are that are so on the edge of difficulty and not quite worth the risk until like you're really really skilled at doing it. So and it's just it's like if anything it, it kind of seems more to appease other tinters. Can you convince Fusion to make their own, or to make hybrid orange cropped? You know, I appreciate that a lot. Isn't it such a better material? Maybe, maybe not better. Uh, well, for me it is. For me, I think it's, I think it's better. But I know there's probably just as many people that prefer the other one. 
But I know there's a ton of people that have no idea about that material. They just see, they see hybrid, they think orange, blue. Orange, blue. It's not, this is entirely different orange from that. They should come out with a, here's how you do it. You come out with basically like a neon version of the same blade with that hybrid material. So the yellow, well, they don't really have a great color to do this. You just make like crazy, like holographic style colors or fluorescent or whatever. They just have to be brighter and stand out a little bit more of the same ones. And you call them hybrid editions or something. Or if you don't want them to be like confusing, you can call them something else that just sounds cool. But yeah, you can make basically like new versions of the same blades. Use the same molds. <sighs> Would be cool. <laughs> That's true, most cuppers don't even know shaved edges exist. <laughs> most, most, most clients, I like, you still have to explain the differences between window films. Like, and that's not like, that's not a bad thing. That's like what your job is there for. That's, that's what you're supposed, like, that's part of your business is what you enjoy doing. So it's like when it gets into some of these like ultra nuanced things, like I only do this for my customers. It's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm sure there's a level of appreciation there. But the vast majority of people are definitely not gonna notice. Not unless you point something out and explain it. It's like, we, let me say, this. I'm not, I would say I am not a great salesperson for film because I'm, sometimes I'm so far into, like I, I try and tone it back. But I can get so far into, into the weeds with explaining window film that it's just like, I start talking about manufacturers and and all these little ins and outs, and it's just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> you just start, it just becomes too much. You just need to simplify it. It's like, okay, what are the real things that are actually gonna matter to the person that's getting the job? Well, the biggest things to me are quality and those physical things that everybody talks about. So shades and heat. Most people don't have, most people like, they have their own things that they nerd out about. Would you rather have a dollar for every time a customer ended after a conversation? Ooh, I like that question a lot. Would you rather have a dollar for every time a customer conversation ended after they heard the price or a dollar every time you had to redo a window? Um, I would rather have, ooh, this is actually, a I like this question a lot. I'd rather have a dollar every time I had a conversation with a customer uh, that hung up after the price. So, every time I scrap a pattern, 
I'm losing material and time. Every time I lose a client over a price, what bugs me really is is the time and energy that went into into the the phone call. And it especially bugs me on the people that you can just like you just know as soon as you start talking to them, they have no interest in, in, in anything other than getting their car tinted as quick, as quick and cheaply as possible. And that's, that's fine. I'm just not their, I'm not their shop. So, but I don't want to sound rude or anything. So I, you have to entertain that phone call. I would like a dollar back for every time I have to do that. Then I feel like I got something for the time. Your, your, biggest, your biggest asset is always the time. So like when I go through and I, I ruin a pattern or something, I'm already getting paid for the job in its entirety. So there's already like that kind of stuff is kind of accounted for. And it, it sucks, but it's OK. I'm making the best out of it. With a phone call, it's just like, I feel like I'm trying to convince people that aren't interested, and, and I'd rather not even have that, that conversation at all. OK, so these are the fingers on here. They're not bad. Um, I'm going to take this over to the glass board. I'm going to shrink it on the glass board just to show you guys. Because you can do a lot with a glass board. So we're going to put this up here. To make it easy, I'm going to have it facing the same type of way that I would shrink it. And look, I'm going to squeegee it top to bottom. And it's already flat. So how do you shrink it on a flat surface? Let's go grab the heat gun. Even though I think it was just over there, and then I, and then I moved it. And then... OK. So we're going to pull this up, same type of thing here. Pull the film up, just leave this part of it exposed, let this side of it kind of lay flat against the glass because we're just going to try and curl the center. And then can't hardly see what's going on. But then as it starts to shrink, you can definitely tell it's starting to come in. And then look. It's got a similar tension to what I would feel on a door window. This is just flat, but you can, you can do that same thing. You can pull it and it tightens up. So on a glass board, you are, you are guesstimating. But let's take it over here and see if we need to tighten it up at all. When I was tinting for um, for Rick's shop, Tint Squad, this is before he had Sun Distributing. Well, like, and they slowly got it and, and whatnot. That's kind of like where it started. I was tinting for them. Um, and look, all the fingers are gone, right? This looks, this looks spot on. Cool. I just shrank it what I felt would be a little bit more because I saw what it was like on the glass, but I already know what I'm getting into. Um, for a regular car, I would just snap it a little bit less than that. Good to go. Um, so the way that we ended up tinting um, at their shop was they didn't want drip marks down the paint of the car, um, not unless it absolutely had to be there. So we would cut things out on the plotter. We would put them on the glass board. We would shrink them on the glass board. And then we would open up the doors and install the tint. And tint would basically never touch the outside of the door windows. And then the back glass, obviously, we had to put it on there. So very little drip marks were ever on the paint. It was all done on plotters. And um, however they turned out was kind of However they turned out, that was always the part that frustrated me, was going through all those steps. And then my doors 
when they didn't line up, it was really frustrating, or some of them didn't look quite as good. But hey, we got a bunch of other cars. I got five more other cars to do that day. You just got to keep going. Why do they need to be shrunk? So the glass has a curve to it. And you see all these air pockets that shoot up. Um, so that's basically what's going to happen on all your edges when you go to put the tint on the inside. The glass has, has a curve to it and the film is flat. So you basically, you're, you're molding or forming the film to fit that same curve. I actually like that term a little better. We say shrinking because that's what's actually happening. But you're molding the tint to fit the same curve or forming it. I remember the glass shop first, they would ask me like, hey, are you done? Are you done molding that? And I'd be like, what? And they're like, making it fit, cur shrinking? <laughs> oh. And I'd be a, a tint dweeb and I'd say, shrinking? <laughs> yes, whatever. Whatever, nerd. I can feel, like, it's really annoying, too. The classes have been very helpful to try and, like, remember all the little things when you're starting out or what new people, what new people see. Because the longer and longer you do this, you just, you see everything as it's happening. If you're starting to pinch the film while you're shrinking it, you know how to adjust it and you know what that looks like. But it's, it gets harder and harder to kind of remember and go back. Unless you see somebody like actually using a tool. One of the most surprising things to me is how many people don't really know how to use like a tri-edge when they first pick it up. I should grab an easy reach too. So I'm actually always looking for like some of the most intuitive things. Like I don't like to go against against the crowd too much. I'd rather have stuff that is just easy, more intuitive to use because then there's it's easier on everybody. Unless that easier thing makes my life way difficult than it or that simpler thing makes my life more difficult and it doesn't make sense. So with, uh, da, da, da. Oh. oh, okay, this is just it's lining up good. Just gotta make sure it doesn't wanna run away. Please explain the tri-edge thing. Okay, so the tri-edge has three edges. This one here, this flat blunted side that is not, like, you don't use this for anything. This is to add structure to the card. So the thickness here, the blunted side. So you use this edge or you use this edge. And you can flip it around this way or this way. Like, you can use these sides, but you just never use this. Yet. And I can't tell you how many people pick it up like this, and then they don't squeegee anything out with it. So the number of times I saw people pick that up and do that, I was just really shocked. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. No, use this side and, and this side. And they go, oh, OK. And then I'd come back, and they were using the wrong side again. So there's all these like little, little things that just unless I saw somebody literally pick up the tool and play around with it. But you get so so detached, so far into 
doing the thing that you forget what it's like to have started out. Should have been using it wrong. I impose people. <laughs> it's all good. It's just funny to me because there's so many of us that wouldn't have thought that way just because, like, I came from using easy reaches. And easy reaches, I think you can use every side on an easy reach, right? Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, the, the easy reach, I can use this side, I can use this side, and I can use this side. The center bows out, and then all these sides are tapered the same. This one, the tri-edge, looks the same, but only this edge and this edge are, like, tapered. So when you use this card, press it up flat against the glass so I can use this to like, you know, to hold it and press it better. But I'll take this card and I'll basically like flex it and curve it against the glass and then swipe with it. No, this thing's awesome. The reason I like these so much is a, a easy reach, even the blue frogs, they're like, oh man, get these too. These are awesome. You just can't use these for as long but there's some areas you're gonna love to use this. Most of the time you're gonna, you're gonna go to a tri-edge. The tri-edge material is gonna last a lot longer. Where the easy reach, it can get roughed up fairly quickly and start scratching your film. The tri-edge will eventually start to do that if you don't take care of it, but. So that little, that little tidbit is going to be super helpful to certain people. Most people aren't even going to realize that, that <laughs> I don't know how to make that into its own PSA other than talk about it on stream from time to time. Maybe I can make a tool video that goes into, into some of that, but. Most tools are pretty intuitive. Like I can push or I can pull with the squeegee blade. That's pretty intuitive. You just usually have to make sure that there's a spray on the window before you do it um, or else it's going to just kind of like stick. But you'll know that very intuitively. You'll go to put this on the glass and try and squeegee something out and you're just like, oh, it's just not really moving. Spray it. Ooh, no, it slides. <laughs> um, and like some of these have like obvious like this is the squeegee part of the blade. This is more of like a handled area. So it's much more self-explanatory. Same thing with the turbos. They're great. They got this little handle. This is the squeegee bit. And I saw people just pick up this and it was like, they would grab it like this. And it's like, no, this, this isn't going to settle against the glass. Have you ever tried Avery Dennison ceramic? I've seen unfortunate pictures. <laughs> so like, I man, I I hope I hope they fix it, um, but this is like straight from um, where I was where I was getting it from. They basically like when they came out with their ceramic line, they pretty much uh, where I got it from. He was pretty much like, yeah, don't get it. <laughs> That was Rick. Rick told me not to get it. And then I've seen some pictures. It's hazy. So there's, there's like certain manufacturers out there, like manufacturing plants out there that specialize in different types of technologies. So a big one that you'll hear is Guari. They have a pretty proven um, oh, I always do this. I touch this and then this opens. But Guari has a pretty proven um, deep dyed window film. 
Really good glue system. Really reliable films. Um, but you don't hear of carbon films coming from there. Not really. Um, in America, you see like eight, okay, so Eastman, I think is the biggest chemical company in the world. And so they like dyeing lots of window film. So a lot of American films and like window films early on, a lot of them were, were pretty much just dyed films. So you would have, you know, that technology got better and better and you'd have really reliable dyed films. And then it seems like Asian countries really got into carbon, uh, carbon technologies. So they were trying to get rid of dyes altogether. They were just jumping straight into making carbon smaller and smaller. So you'll see some of these products like kind of you, you take the best of this manufacturer for these films and you take the best of this manufacturer for, for these other ones. Am I going to plot this one? What am I doing? Facebook still has the Kona title. Oh, it's, you know, I didn't even think it was going to stream to Facebook. It said I needed to, like, reconnect some services. So thank you for letting me know. This is basically a Kona, right? <laughs> oh, God, where's my step stool? Why do I do this to myself? Oh, I know what I usually do for this one. What, uh, another question. Uh, the, why don't you use a separate squeegee to clean the glass versus install? Is that, is that what the question was? I think. Is the back window not already tinted? It is tinted, it's just not tinted by me yet. We use a different. Why do you use a different squeegee to clean the outside of the windows and not your install squeegee? Oh. Um, oh, 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 as far as like that Libman squeegee goes, it just covers more surface area. That's all. Maybe I should plot it. What am I doing? I think the last handful I've plotted. So there's factory privacy glass on this one. And then we're tinting, we're tinting over that. Oh yeah, because I did that with this one. That's weird. Sometimes this car goes to sleep. <laughs> so sentry activated. All, so all the doors are like closed and whatnot. Come on car, I need you to wake up here. There we go, now we got it. Yay, that's what I needed. Hey, can you find out if a factory tent is ceramic? Uh, you gotta take like a meter. Did you throw away the optimum towel? No, of course not. No, I still have the optimum towel. Okay, as far as this goes, oh, I'm a little bit wide. I should plot this. The way that they do their paneling always makes this a little bit harder to see. 
because they don't have a dotted edge either. And I appreciate that too. Where's my other, oh. <laughs> Duh. It's being used as a shelf, which it probably shouldn't be used for. Some water, put you there, put this on the other side, just so I have something to stand on. There we go, now I'm tall. and flip I think yeah I don't think it's made to not be in a mode that's not recording <laughs> so sometimes I whip my head too fast and the whole thing goes whoa are you coming to San Antonio no no we don't have plans on going I it sounded pretty promising at first and then we took a trip to Florida yeah, no. <laughs> we're done. We have, uh, so we've got a big trip planned at the end of the year. Um, we're going back to the, uh, back to the Philippines. And so that is gonna be like our, everything is gonna be in preparation for that. I'm, I'm honestly looking for my dry shrink prep bag. I don't know where it is. I do this all the time. I put something down. I don't know where I put it. I'm probably gonna find it shortly after. I'm gonna use a bounce sheet because that's what's first at hand. Is it on, is it on that table? No. Ay, ay, ay. See, I would have done this first, but I was thinking I was gonna find my baggie. And I know I got it around here somewhere and just gotta find it, because that would be much quicker to prep with. Oh, well here's one, this one's almost empty. Cannon. What happens if you drop the bounce sheet? <laughs> Pick it up. Jack needs to help organize you before you stream. He does a good job. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that's there. Windshield. Um, I'm getting my windows tinted tomorrow, ceramic all around, including windshield, but the tint guy said not to do the sunroof, any input. Um, he's probably worried that it might shatter. It's kind of like this urban myth. People hear of that, and if it actually happens, I've never seen it. Maybe some unfortunate person, and then rumors spread. No, you can still tint them. I'm sorry, couldn't participate because live broadcast was too late in Korean time. Uh, 1.15 a.m. now. Dang, you 13 hours. You 13 hours ahead of us. I know that one. Actually, I wasn't sure. So the Philippines is literally right now 12 hours ahead, and then daylight savings time kind of adjusts that a little bit. Yeah, that's rough. It gets really confusing, um, or like, it's kind of, I'm sure it gets kind of annoying being at like literally opposite time. Use the clear films and you'll be fine. I don't think there's a problem with even going darker. 
I've tinted them in like as dark as 20, I think, but I don't know. If anybody asked me to tint a sunroof, I'm still gonna do it. But like the thing is, you if if you're worried about it being a problem, like this is for any shop out there, if you're worried about it being a problem, just give a disclaimer. Be like, we have heard through rumors or whatever, we can't confirm anything, that some sunroofs are rumored to have shattered and we still are very young, like we're not super clear. And then leave it up to them. Like, they want to put it on, they can. But I, I like, all this, like, outright, outright refusing to do it or just, like, no, we don't do that. It's, like, just why? <laughs> it's, like, I won't tint a cr cracked windshield. Why not? If somebody's handing you money to, to tint the cracked windshield, then they already know there's, like, it's a cracked windshield, man. They'll get it replaced, and they'll come back, and they'll get another windshield tinted afterwards. Um, how's that video doing, by the way? I don't know. I'm going to check. Dang. Click-through rate dropped. Ooh, ooh. Ah. Okay, this is YouTube stuff. I'm going to I'm letting that back window dry and then I'll then I'll do the back window. Um so This is always interesting for me to talk about. Something on this video needs to change. Um I'm I think the thumbnail is like it's okay, but it fits in place with a lot of the other thumbnails that I've done in that category and they've done really well. But this is the click through rate and you can see it was actually very strong and then it drop substantially, having an 8% click-through rate and lower is not great. I wanna see, honestly, at least 10. So like 12 is, is sweet, but it dropped. So something about this video is not selling, and that's usually the title. So I got to think of some way to change this title. I thought it was pretty good. But apparently it's not. I should put illegal in there. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> I don't know. Something to think about. But the, the problem with videos is always a marketing issue. You have to figure out how to sell your video better. Because um, it is a good video. It's not that it's a bad video, it's that people aren't clicking on it. Um, as far as watch time goes, view duration, see? View duration's good. Um, four minutes, 39 seconds, it's above average. That's good, yep, view duration. I've had millions of views off of three and a half minute view durations. This has four minute, 30 seconds. So view duration is, is awesome. I gotta figure out how to sell this. How do we how do we sell the video? This will help you guys out if you guys are looking to do YouTube. Everything is a uh, is a marketing issue. You put a lot into the video, and then you the title and thumbnail becomes an afterthought. You need to think of the title and the thumbnail first, <laughs> and then make your video. I didn't do that. Oh fuck! What a bummer. Really, really Tesla back window. I thought this could be covered on a 24 inch roll. It's just a little bit shy. I should have known that at this point. That's fine. I really thought it was like, just gonna be long enough. Never get a tint ticket again. I like it. I think that's actually Ooh, that's, it's, that's pretty good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy that one and think about it. So I'm going to create a little note here. And then if you guys come up with some, I'll paste them and kind of talk about it. So this is also a really interesting thing. I, sorry, I could go on and on, on about this stuff, so it's fun for me. 
Um, the way that I, I really like to look at videos is not one topic, but to have like two strong topics um, in your title. So right now, it's like the idea of tinting your window temporarily and being able to retint it very quickly and easily. So like there's, you could frame it up where you save time, but it, like what, what Lobo just said, never get, a, never get a tint ticket again. It's pretty strong on click baiting. Um, but it, it brings up le uh, the legality of, of tinting in the title. It's not just about tinting itself. So you kind of like start getting into other subjects. When I did my transition window tint, at first I called it, I think, transition window tint or something like that. Or like my Amazon mirror video, I called it what it was in the Amazon mirror. But then I kind of changed it to being like Amazon's best selling smart mirror. And then it, start, it starts piquing your interest in other ways. So however you can do that with, with your videos and, and your marketing and stuff, it's a challenge. But it's well worth it when you figure it out. So that video right now is probably a title change away from doing awesome. I just got to think of what it is. It's, uh, it's the hardest part. That back window looks pretty straightforward. Oh yeah, this one, this one's real, real simple, gradual curve to it. I mean, it's nice too, because it's got a real stubby trunk here, so you can just get at the entire back window. It's easier to do this <laughs> from the front here than, than on the sides. If my power cord was just slightly longer, I don't want to move it. <laughs> just going to do this 50 times. I have, a, I have another group I think I'm going to post in and maybe ask for some help on that title. I don't know. But yeah, oh yeah, a good example is my, my, <laughs> my ceramic Walmart video. The original title was like, keep your car cooler for less or something along those lines. It's basically like what it, what it was talking about. It's like $20... Walmart tint, stay cooler for less or something like that, or like ceramic for cheap. It didn't hardly do anything, and I kept changing it, and I kept changing it, and eventually I settled on Walmart tint should be illegal, and that video went <laughs> <laughs> It did way better. So really, like, one of the better thumbnails would literally be one of those pictures where you have somebody, like, with their window, like, half down, and then a cop with, like, a tent meter or something. That would probably be better. But yeah, one of the one of the worst mistakes is titling something exactly what you're doing. It's more often than not, that's not interesting. Not to a broad audience. 
We're not trying to completely clickbait. We're just trying to get you to watch a video that then you will turn around and actually enjoy by being really intrigued and in seeing the title. Clickbait isn't bad if the video delivers what the clickbait was about. I watched you take off forward rear view with a drill bit on a live stream that helped me out because my tin guy wouldn't take off. He said it wasn't going to be responsible for breaking my glass. Yeah, that particular type of Ford mirror is totally fine. You just need like a little, like a thin piece of metal to sneak in there. So yeah, that drill bit worked out great. I have since, or at least for a little bit, have found my uh, flathead screwdriver that I usually use. I had to take one off yesterday. No, Thursday was yesterday, Wednesday. I had to take one off Wednesday on an Explorer. Same thing. If we worked in advertising, you would come up with, it is Coke, and I come along and say, how about Coke is it? How about Coke is it? And I would come along and say, how about? I don't get what you mean there. <laughs> is this live on Twitch? How do I find it? Uh, it's the Tint Stuff channel on Twitch. I gotta see if I can change it over to Tint Studio. I still, I've just kept, Twitch the same. I have not looked at Twitch in in years at this point, but I still stream there. Twitch is like eight, so it, it's live streamers, but it's really like, it's really gamer live streamers. Like there's a particular type of content that they really like with the people that they like to watch. Very hard to break into it. It's basically like a club. So I thought being very different and unique had like a pretty good opportunity there it does if you can get in through like some sort of like a major collaboration. You have a potential to break out, but I think that's the only way that you can really do it. Twitch is funny. Actually, that's not entirely true. You can also break out by actually moving people over to Twitch from like YouTube, but then at that point, why would you move them off of YouTube? Oh, I get ya. You were almost there on the title. That used to be Coke's tagline for a while. I gotcha, I gotcha. It's like, that's such a powerful little difference. It's really cool to see. Small changes, wording placement, and trying to keep everything, like a real trick to, uh, to titles is how to figure out how to say the exact same thing in as few words as you can possibly say them. Or whatever word you add to it, make it very intriguing. So, that being said, I'll, I will spend days playing around and thinking of titles, and it'll distract from making another video. <laughs> oh, um, do, yeah, do vacuuming later. Um, it'll kick some dust up in the air.
The sanding was okay, though. I haven't even really talked about that much. What am I, where's the bag? Where'd the bag go? Oh, it's this one. So I just bought some pre-cuts from Tint Zoom. Is there anything I need to know on that, like shrink or no shrink? No experience, straight DIY. Watch lots of videos. Yes, you have to shrink it. Pre-cuts is literally just having somebody cut out your patterns for you, and then you have to do the rest. So all the rest of the rules apply, shrinking, cleaning, everything to make that tint in, like cleanly installed. You just got a little jump ahead because somebody cut them out for you. It's a good site, but definitely, definitely go into it prepared. Okay, we're gonna tape these off too. Look, this is where the blue wire goes. This is where the black wire goes. I know that because it's labeled on the glass. So whoever did this, good job. You did it correctly. my tent guy if he knew you. He said yes, and I'm the one that got him into tinting. <laughs> That's super cool. I just made tent videos years and years ago. I didn't really know where any of this was going, but it, yeah, it's super cool to hear anybody getting into it because off of my uh, off of my silly videos what tape so I'm using house wrap tape it's pretty water resistant and it sticks this one's from Lowe's you can tell because it says Lowe's But yeah, look for, uh, look for their house wrap tape. It's over in the building section, like where all the plywoods and stuff. It's usually at like an end cap or something. They keep it hidden. Is there a roll, is there a roll of GeoShield that's 70% and 90% IR or 95 or whatever? So they're Pro Nano. I had a talk with them about this. I was surprised to see some like Apex only go up to like 50% at the time. I don't know if they've brought in another percent. It's been a minute since I've, that I've looked. So that lineup's always evolving. But their Pro Nano is actually called Pro Nano Ultra. So the 70 uh, blocks out like 85. So it's a little bit stronger in that range. I think that really comes from like you would see that you'd see this with like a lot of companies. Gotcha. You'd see that with a lot of companies where they would have basically their lineup of films and then they would have line, one line of film that would be like a, a 70, an 80, a 90, and they would be like a light blue or kind of in a specific category. That's where the 70 
100% pro-nano lies. It's called pro-nano ultra for that. So, so no, they don't, but their pro-nano ultra is like gonna be what you're looking for out of their lineup. Frameless, Tesla frameless doors hard to tint. They're just a little bit, I don't know. They're on like more curved. More slip will, will help you tuck it in if that's your problem. They're just bigger, a little more curved. Um, I don't think they're crazy difficult, but just a little bit more than let's say a Camaro. Okay, let's poke my head up here. Tight in the front. Yeah, I'll cut the fronts a little bit shorter down in the down in the lower edges for that reason. I'm always pretty conscious of how far in on a frameless window that I tuck the film into. Do you have any Tesla videos? This might be one. I don't have a, uh, actually, all the Teslas that I've done, I've done live. I've done like a lot of ceramic windshield videos lately. One of them might have been a Tesla, but they're all the same. Like the Tesla windshield on everything but the Model X is gonna be the exact same process as a Malibu. <laughs> they're just taller. Mm, yep, the Model 3, the rear glass, that's a big one. Ty Super Shattered two dollars. Thanks for all the great tips. Super. You are welcome. I'm pretty happy with this one so far. I feel like everything up to this point is right on track. <laughs> baby red for the baby super. Yeah. You get a little vroom. Uh, but Ty, uh, thank you so much for the two. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so this area in here um, the farther down lower that you go, the tighter it's going to get. And that's the case with a lot of frameless doors because this glass kind of like weighs over this way, putting pressure down on this lower seal. And that's where two seals meet together, puts the most pressure right in that area. So cutting that a little slimmer so you don't have as much to tuck, um, unless you pop out the seal, it's going to be helpful. Have you ever had any experience with the Autobahn? No, no, I haven't. We were just talking about them in the other stream. Yeah, I don't know much about them. Um, somebody said that they're um, they're basically Hooper, or they're owned by Hooper or something. So they're going to be similar to that. But don't quote me on that. I don't know. I don't know enough. Shops in, shops in Mississippi are making a killing off a of ceramic 700 for most vehicles. That's what I'm charging on most ceramic vehicles too. <laughs> Thanks for the videos, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Good night. Um, 
shops in Mississippi. Yeah, you see that um, all over the country. So let's get these. Yeah, these would have been faster to just uh, to just plot or cut it. 100% back window quarters. Oh yeah, that'll save me some time. I need to up my prices. Yep, especially because the whole world is upping their prices. I mean, this is honestly something that you need to do year to year. It just is most apparent right now with how fast everything just shot up. Prices always need to be adjusting. Um, the best way, for me, the best way that I've found to do it is when it's really busy or when you're in a, when you're in a position um, to take chances. Let me grab that while I put it up there. My headset keeps, this battery keeps flopping over. So when you're, when you start getting booked out two, three, four weeks in advance, raise your prices. So also when you don't have to depend on tinting for a living, you can keep trying to adjust your pricing. So whenever I've had students tell me like, oh yeah, I, I like, you know, I have a I have a full-time job, I kind of do this on the weekends or whatever, it's like, so what you're telling me is that you're booked out through the week and all you have is <laughs> weekends open, you can make that sound really cool to people and don't undercut yourself because you're only tinting on like a Saturday or whatnot. Or like, because if you don't have to rely on tinting as your primary source of income, then you can be a little bit more choosy on what types of jobs that you get. It's actually really nice. That was like, when I had the glass shop, that was, uh, that was really, really helpful. Wait, did I flip that? I hope I flipped it. Hmm, yep, this is right. Okay, so this goes on this side. Do I have a standard price? Yeah, um, so what I ended up doing I noticed I spent way too much time on every car. So I always did what a typical shop does and I charged more for SUVs and less for sedans and stuff like that. But I would spend like basically equal amounts of time on them. So I just raised my starting price. So anytime I get any car, I don't feel like I'm not getting my, the, like I'm, I'm getting that value out of it. Because I'm not trying to go for volume here. I'm trying to spend more time with it. So I just, I raise the initial price. And there's, there are plenty of calls that I get and they're like, oh, okay, well, I'm still calling around. It's like, all right, that's fine. Like it not hurting my feelings. You didn't know anything about this shop before you called it, so. There's more people looking for just a quick job and that's not what I'm trying to service, but I'm also not insane and trying to 
go crazy on my entry level pricing because I still realize <laughs> that there's people calling here <laughs> that, like I said, they have no idea. So I'm still like balancing this regular tint shop slash media tint shop. So as, as that time, as, as that kind of goes on and more people recognize um, the channel, that base pricing is, is eventually going to change, but I'm going to make sure I've got enough of a lead time and regular jobs lined up to support it. But for most of what I do, I start at 290. Um, I'm still trying to at least work most clients up to carbon. So carbon is like a $60 jump. It's really not bad. So you can see going from 290 to 350 is not a big jump. That's kind of like what I'm aiming to do. And it's honestly the best value film that I have on the board. But if you want the best film, then we jump right up into ceramic. And I do ceramic for 450. Ugh. And now adding a full windshield is 250 extra on ceramic, so 700. So honestly, with the windshield, it, I used to give a little bit of a break, but now things, especially with inflation, I've, I've adjusted. So I'm like 450, um, 450, 550, and then like 700. With a full windshield. And then of course you can add a uh, sunroof if you want but most people don't do sunroofs where I am do you know this guy's got a shade for it this is an awesome shade it's like it fits up there damn near perfectly Tesla at least does a good job of darkening up this roof a lot and making it heat pretty like you know, they put a ceramic coating on it or in it or whatever. They make it heat resistant. But you still have no way of covering it up completely. I think that's one of the weirdest design choices for all these electric cars. So they're like very interesting. Like they're, when you're in the showroom and you're seeing video, it's like, oh, it's this all open feeling cabin. But then when you actually own it, it's like, oh, I kind of want to feel like I'm not in a fishbowl. <laughs> I charge 750 no windshield with black magic film. Well, I hope you use their static cling film. Someone texts me and I don't feel like transferring their number. What? I'm basically using a new phone as a reset. I'm basically, oh really? Hang on, let me adjust this one more time. Canon. Canon. God. See this? This is driving me crazy. I gotta change the battery out too here pretty soon. I'm basically using new phone as a reset. So are you like, are you basically just trying to say that you're like a whole new tint business now? trying to understand. Okay, so if I pull this, I just wonder if this top strap isn't tight enough. Oh wait, no, it is this way. I 
after yesterday's video was the Black Magic sponsorship coming. <laughs> I think based on all the other stuff that I said, probably not anytime soon. Oh, that's a little better. Maybe it won't bobble so much. Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the other battery. See, that video, that video is going to be followed up with another video that basically says their ceramic is horrible. And you should get their dyed film instead. <laughs> because I'd like to make, I would like to make a... It's very orange peel. I can't really see through it, but otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I said about that film. Is this charged? Yes. Cool. We did a thing. No video. Okay, so we'll unplug it and we'll plug it back in. That'll usually fix it. Yeah, and it was purpley, like it did not look great. But it performed awesome. I was actually really impressed. I thought I was gonna have to pull the door panel and tape it at the bottom. Oop, nope. I got that far enough down there and it just stuck. I couldn't believe we got it to work so well. That video was, that was pretty great. Yeah, oh yeah, back to the title. Um, So that's interesting. You know what? So self-tinting windows is not interesting to an average person. But it's interesting to us. So that explains this a little bit more to me. Like the people that know your channel, watch your channel, and then as it broadens out, click-through rate drops. People don't care about self-tinting windows. Or you could say one button tint. <laughs> I don't know. There's a way to do that. Uh, no more. Never get a tint ticket again. So we could say never get a tint ticket again a bunch of different ways. We could say never get a tint ticket again or we could say no more tint tickets. I like this better. No. How to get away with dark tint. I'm gonna copy it. Because it's good to have all these little variations and kind of think in different directions. No more tint ticket. Tickets or ticket? Focus on color, black on the outside, but purple on the inside. It's not illegal if it clings. No, it's not illegal if it clings. So you have to try and like, I know literally nothing. And then when I look at this, what do I see? I see this dumb face. I see a tint box, maybe instant cling. I see like a, what looks like it could be a tint box or whatever. But then I definitely see window film against a window. Like this is pretty identifiable pretty quickly. 
Um, and I've learned like this is generally enough for a thumbnail. Stick it or ticket. <laughs> no more tint tickets. It's like it's pretty good. You could also say avoid tint tickets. Can you add a sticker of a what this? <laughs> It's kind of fun putting that on the end. All right, I'm going to continue this. Um, but I might just save it like this for now. No more tint tickets. How many ways can you say no more tint tickets? Avoid tint tickets. Not avoid. Yeah, I was kind of on the fence. No more tin tickets. Okay, let's let's play with this and see what happens. So this is how you see if what you did works. You go to your analytics, and then there's this handy little uh, bar here. Last 48 hours, change this to 60 minutes. Watch this number here. If this starts to slowly increase, even if it goes from 90 to 120, you made a positive change on your video. It's a, it can be a slow thing at first. It's not immediately gonna, gonna boom. But what, what I've noticed is YouTube notices these small little changes and then as it starts to perform better, then they, they slowly seed it out to more people, and that's how you kind of give a, a, what I would call a dead video more chances. You can do that over and over and over again. Police hat. Put a cop in the thumbnail. So that's nothing I can do right now, but probably later. Do we just replace me? We could probably do that. We could probably replace me with the uh, with a cop. I think that would make it a little bit stronger. Just straight up putting like like the Walmart video that I did when I said it should be illegal, that was enough. Or you trust this again. <laughs> yeah, those little things they could help. I think it's more the the thumbnail, but the thumbnail like I'm going off of like some prior prior intuitions here. That has been has been good enough for a lot of videos. So I think the thumbnail is actually strong enough. Most of it then comes down to your title. Self-tinting windows is not interesting to people. That sucks. Didn't you say you're editing a video from your class? Uh, we do have footage from, from the class. But I don't know <laughs> how much of it can be in a video. <laughs> it's one of those things that sound really good and then I don't really plan for it very much and then it kind of goes not happening. or it kind of doesn't happen. 
I have too many things in my hand right now. Why do I have so many things here? But this is fun. I like talking about videos like this. as a cop. <laughs> if I have to run, I'll check in next stream and see if the title changed. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Hopefully, we'll see. I'm going to let it sit there to the end of this windshield, and then I'll, uh, I'll see if it significantly dropped or if it kind of maintained. Hopefully, it picked up a little bit. It's extra annoying because it gets it gets more and more difficult with every video that you do. It doesn't get easier, it gets harder. So you can make an awesome video. And you can have it do really well. And then remaking a very similar video with a very similar title is not necessarily gonna do well because people have already seen that thing. It might go out to some different people, but so we've done quite a few like ceramic windshield videos and stuff like that and reverse rolling. And there was one recently that kind of blew up and did a half million views. And that was super cool to see. But trying to figure out what to do after that as a follow up gets harder and harder and harder. Where do you get the NT blades? Amazon. That's where I found them. So if you go to, yeah, just look up the blades. Look up like the stainless steel NT blades. And then you'll see they give you options to click on different blade types on the listing. They have like all the blades listed together. <laughs> Thank you. I hit the share button, heard that helps with the algorithm. Yeah, all the little engagement stuff. It like it can contribute on some level. Nobody really knows how much. But YouTube is really good at just identifying what people want to watch and what people don't want to watch. So you can't really game the system. You know, you hear watch time is really important. You hear this is important. You hear that is important. What's most important is making a good video and then right up there with it, getting people to click on it. So having that balance between delivering on something in the video that's the that's where those two things cross. That makes it really difficult. But yeah, if you so TikTok, I think sharing makes absolutely makes a video. Cuz it seems like so many more people share videos on on TikTok. So when you make something very short and entertaining or valuable, you'll naturally see people share it. And then you see a video that kind of might stagnate for a little bit, all of a sudden just blow up in views because more people start to share it. I don't think that happens as much on YouTube. All right, let's see. So as far as it hasn't been long at all, starting to see some little spikes. So here I hardly had any spikes that went 
into three or four per minute. Here we're seeing a couple more that are up in the three or four range so far, but I don't think that's, that's near enough to tell yet for four. So it looks like it might be a positive change, but definitely gotta let it cook. So on a video that's been kind of like stagnating for like a month or two, it could take it could take a solid like day or two for it to start showing real results and then you kind of forget about it and the next thing you know it you check back and it's your hottest video. But uh, that spot's still wet. But this is fun. I understand. Um, I, I've I've learned a lot about it at this point. Just from playing around with videos, trying different things. It's cool. I'm glad, like, there's a lot of mystery to it. There's a lot of talk about the you getting featured in the algorithm and this and that. Like, I think it's pretty unbiased. I think when you make something that people actually want to click on and watch, it gets shown. And then when people don't click on your video, it's, it's a marketing problem. So this is showing me pretty blatantly what does, what does the watch time look like? The people that are clicking on this are watching a good amount of this video. Impression click through, the initial people that clicked on this were kind of got the joke and then it dropped off. There's just not much interest. So then we have to make a change that piques the interest and once we make that change, this video should, uh, should do real well here. It'll pick up. I hope so. Let's see. Titles are easy to change. Thumbnails are really hard, but I'm, I'm having a t good title is more important. Somebody said this, and I wasn't really sure, but I like to think this way. Thumbnails get people to read the title. So as long as whatever your thumbnail is is intriguing enough to stop, and then you read the title kind of after you look at that thumbnail really quick. I think that's a really interesting way of thinking about it, breaking those things down. So I think that holds pretty true. I always try and try and have a very descriptive picture, an action shot, or whatever I thought was the most visually attractive thing about that happening that kind of explained what was going on. Window, tint, peeling off. Then I read the title, no more tint ticket. Okay, what's this about? I thought self, like I didn't want to go in that direction. I more wanted to keep it along the lines of self-tinting windows because I think that's like the funniest bit about it. But baiting people into no more tint tickets, it's kind of what I did with the tint or with the TikTok video. <laughs> it also makes me frustrated because again, it's like another legal thing and then I feel creatively challenged. This simple hack to never get a tint ticket again. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That'll get old real fast. <laughs> It'll pick up lots of people are interested in avoiding tint tickets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely one of the biggest. I talk to damn near every customer about it. But I kind of took a, 
Paige had a TikToks book on that one. Where like I made my uh, like how to avoid tint tickets, and then I just cut the top top two inches off on the window. <laughs> That's my most popular TikTok. Is it true? No. <laughs> but it's TikTok, so I didn't really care. On YouTube, I care a little bit more. I'm like, oh, I actually want to have something like legitimately best of both worlds. But uh, it's not really. <laughs> it was funny, though. Boy, the comments are going to be interesting to read on that one. That's the other thing. So, a lot of the comments that I got on it were people were like, man, that was really funny. Or, I'm surprised that worked so well. But, like, people that already got... got the joke as they were kind of coming into it. Or once they saw it, they knew exactly what was going on. Trying to then attract an audience that is mostly about tin tickets. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of hate on that one. Especially when it if it broadens out. Sixty-nine viewers, nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dang, I don't know how that just slipped out of my hand, but I caught it. We're hoping for good things on this windshield. This job is going really, really nice, though. All the doors went very straightforward, the back. I didn't have any issues with them. I'm pretty happy about this. <sighs> All right, now comes the fun bit. We gotta cut this whole thing out and we gotta install it. So make sure this goes as straight as you can. Push a lot of these down. Oh, 
Okay. That's an interesting... When you're done with your job, what level of contamination that remains? So any tinner will tell you there's always something. There's always going to be something that you can look around and find. But what is it and where is it? It's more of a, I'd say, a big part of it is more of a feeling. When you tin a window and your eye isn't drawn to any particular spot, it just looks nice and even, and you don't notice anything without getting close and like hunting for stuff, in my opinion, that you did a good job. So if you have clumps of speckles, that'll be pretty obvious right off the bat. Like I'll stand here, I'll give it a quick once over and I'll be like, oh, what are these right here, right? Your eyes shouldn't just be drawn to any one particular spot on the window. As soon as it is, um, like you'll find usually something very small, but as long as there's no real grouping around it, um, and there's like one, little thing here, one little thing there, then for the most part, you're fine. But it also is like, where is that thing? So if I have like one speck and it's down here in the bottom corner, is somebody gonna notice that? Maybe. But if that same speck was then right here where they're looking through and seeing their mirror, well, then they're basically looking at it all day. So there, there isn't any like defined rules for it. Um, and there are things that one person is going to notice that another person is not going to notice. So to keep it really simple, don't hunt for things on your own windows too much. Give them a quick once over, wipe it off, be pretty objective, like, oh, okay. And then if you see something small, you can try and touch it up real quick. Or if you get like a, you know, press the air out, mask it, whatever. Again, if it's small, it's like it's little touch up work. Just make sure your eyes aren't really, you know, totally drawn to it. But the thing is, once you notice it, you don't unnotice it. But so when you do all that, most of your cars are gonna to be totally fine. Every once in a while, you might have still a client go, hey, can you look at this for me? Because you're probably not even gonna know absolutely every little thing and it'll dry out and maybe look a little different than what you thought. So be realistic about the flaws, but also don't ignore and try and brush off your clients, even if you feel like it's acceptable. So you, you inevitably will have somebody that goes, hey, you know, the rest of the car looks great. There's just something here. I'm not sure if this will go away. Kind of concerned about it. From there, you can, you can figure out what it is and then Honestly, if it's that like annoying, tell them to bring the, the, the job back in, schedule a time, have them drop it off, take care of the window, and just give a little like, hey, I'll make this look better. There's always gonna be something, but definitely gonna try and make it look, you know, do as best of a job as I can. Usually you can, you can explain things to a level of like reasonability. Because what, what most people are concerned about is just getting a bad job. And then, you know, as a shop, you take their money. 
just want to point this out real quick. This fabric here is a little bit bunched up. I haven't done anything on the windshield yet. I just want to point that out. Just as one of those potential things. I don't think it's going to be a problem or anything. I just like to raise awareness when I come into something like that. Anyways. Yeah, you're just... Like, most clients are going to be pretty happy, pretty reasonable. And then if somebody is like, hey, you know, I got my car tinted there. There's something here. I don't like it or I'm not sure if this will go away or whatever. Even if it's, you know, relatively small, you want to show that you're going to take care of their concerns. So really thrills people to like just make it very easy like yeah bring it back oh yeah, yeah I see what you mean there's always going to be something but you know I can make it oh, let me try, let me redo it I'll make it look better put a little bit more attention in that one I don't know there's always you know, something in a total job, and then you can go in for little adjustments and whatnot. <sighs> All right, where's my rope? There's my rope. Yep, 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 yep. Do the best you can and always be willing to fix it. True, true, true. But yeah, there's there's always people that like want to quantify what that is and, and you can't. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Uh, unfortunately, we're all booked up. Um, the earliest that I'm going to have is going to be like later next week. Alrighty. Well, you have a good one. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know how to respond. <laughs> he was looking for something tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. No, I still got battery. Da da. Nope. <sighs> Should be fine. I tell them we don't live in a perfect world. No matter how hard I try, it'll never be a hundred. So let me know if you have any issues. I'll be more than happy. I like I like that um, because of like when you say it, especially. Let me know if you have any issues. I always let people know that too. Like hey. Give it a, I tell people give it a week um, to fully dry out. Even though like you can roll your windows down in a few days, sometimes there may be a stubborn water pocket that just takes longer to dry after a week. Um, if there's something that, um, that you don't like, uh, let me know. Yeah, just like you said, let me know. Be more than happy to, to resolve it. And do the same thing, give it a week. Yep. Yep. It's a good time frame. We're going to buy dry shrink prep. Uh, dryshrinkprep.com. 
That's where you can buy it. Or just Google dry shrink prep, and it'll, it should bring you right to the website. Uh, to have a reference, when you finish the job, do you give a guarantee uh, by someone by some defect or damage? Oh, OK. Yeah, um, so there's always a, um, a warranty slash guarantee that goes out with each job. Um, so that's more of a, uh, like I, I'm a shop, I stand behind all the products that I install. Um, there's like an official warranty from GeoShield too, um, and with any legitimate film company. So if like something fails long term, they are, they take responsibility for their films. But in the short term, you know, if somebody has um, some imperfections or whatever that they're upset with, um, yeah, like, let me know. I try and do as perfect as a job as I can. But yeah, there definitely can be, can be unforeseen film failures. That should be uh, that should be covered uh, by whatever company that you're pulling film through in. Have you tried the soap bar method? I haven't really given it a, a fair shot. I did try one, um, and it was really, really sticky. I just need to refine how I do it a little bit. <laughs> I saw just a couple of different ways to do it. But yeah, it should work. There's lots of people that like doing it. This is a mighty tall windshield. This is a 36 inch roll too. Still covers it. But this is a, uh, this is a tall windshield, man. So on this one, he said he is an aftermarket thing. You can actually adjust the screen. That's crazy. And Really cool. I don't think I've seen any of them do that. That helps a little bit. Clean, clean, clean. that I'm gonna go from one side to the other because my uh, whenever I leave a water trail in the middle that I used to do that with back windows drives me crazy now is that 50 yes Fifty ceramic is honestly my uh, I think my favorite go-to right now. I'd say it's a nice grown-up film. You want like a little bit of shade and you get a lot of heat rejection. And it surprisingly appears more tinted than you would think.
but not in a way that you feel like it's going to get you in any sort of trouble. See one side to the other, and come back across this way. Ugh, mirrors. I don't know what to do about you mirrors. There's that, but... One more. Do this one more time. Around here, around the mirror area is always where, like, I try and be extra careful because, you know, something that you can't really squeegee very well. And then we're going to jumble the film around it. Tried to shrink crystalline 50, gave me so many problems. Yeah, you can't treat that stuff like normal film. You have to pocket or balloon shrink it, basically. So you start on the outside and you work your way in. I have a, I have a video where, look up how to shrink 3M, and you might find one of my videos. And that's the basic technique. I talk a little bit more about it. You can do it with any film. But essentially, it, it when you balloon it, you're taking away hot spots, really, and you're, sh you're shrinking a whole area as evenly as you can. So instead of shrinking from, like, the, the middle out, you're shrinking from, like, the, the top edge and the bottom edge in, but you're, you're getting it to swell with a whole, like, pocket of heat. It's really interesting. All right. So there's that. Let's go to the other side. Let's get that. Where's my squeegee? Getting ready for the fun bit. Oh, I found a file, by the way, so I should be doing that plotter video here soon enough. I'm really I want to peek at how my video is doing now. probably focus on this. <laughs> Two seconds. How's it doing? We're gonna do that. Eh, it's tough to tell. I'd say not super clear yet. center about the workhorse and I'm disappointed with film cut that's sad I don't like hearing about that it's kind of plotters so um if I was to give you one recommendation on a software, I would try um, Computer Cut. Give them, give them a whirl, see how they work out. So unfortunately, plotters are really production machines. And you have to kind of learn how to work with them. 
Um, which is why I get asked all the time, like, hey, you have a plotter, why don't you use it with your with your tent? So as far as plotters go. Hey. Oh goodness. Nick Doolan super chatted four dollars and ninety-nine Nick. cents. You make tinting Nick Teslas Doolin. look like tinting a Honda Civic smiley face. <laughs> Thank you. Nick, thank you so much for the five. Yeah, when everything goes right. It's what's nice about this car, especially compared to like a classic car. Like this is the type of car that, so like the Model Y is definitely on the easier, easier range of things. But Teslas are definitely straightforward enough that like when you learn their quirks they just become like like most other cars for me classic cars never became that but i never really got them super super consistent sway away from digi the worst no i don't think it's the worst i actually think it's one of the better ones but it's got its fallbacks unfortunately So they're not even pricing their software that high either. So you can still get it for like 85 bucks a month. Most like computer cuts, 250 a month. It's quite a jump. But in my opinion, price be damned, I just want patterns that work. So that's where, as long as they're reliable, the, the problem I have is most companies, like there, there are only a, there's only really like one software that I can truly recommend is like amazing. And if you're not a dealer, you can't get it. So I, you know, sorry about your luck. That's how, that's how it is. And same thing for me. And unfortunately, I also watched um, like Rick's shop, they used, they used DAP, they used it early on, they promoted it some, and they helped, as far as I understand, like, he was pretty, pretty decent, decent friends with the guy that, like, did a lot of the patterns. And they still yoinked that software away in the end. It's like it wasn't their decision. It was Expel. So, unfortunately, uh, we're kind of left with like weird alternatives. So, I've heard and seen Computer Cut is probably going to be your best bet, but it is more expensive. But you're you're gonna find problems with with every single one of them. If you were if you were hand cutting, and you're moving over to the plotter for reliability, then it's unfortunately gonna let you down some. If you're moving over it as a production shop, it, it you're gonna have a different opinion about it. It's gonna be largely good enough for what you do. So it's, for some people, very invaluable, but it's definitely not gonna make everybody happy. And I wish, like, there's such a, such a widely used tool. I wish there was better options for everybody, but with some of the changes that, uh, that Film Cut made recently, it's, it's in the right direction, and I'm happy to see them. Also, you can try contacting their support and seeing if there's any plot or tweaks that you can maybe make to help the sizing of those patterns fit better. I have been really happy with, with them and they're learning new things about the plotters too to adjust. So it's at least worth talking to them about. Because believe it or not, there is two calibrations. There's like 
the actual size of the patterns, and then there's the way that the software or the plotter interprets the size of those patterns. And also mine had a wavy top edge when I first got the workhorse too. And I was like, what the hell? And then we made a tweak on the plotter and it fixed, fixed my issue. So let them know. I forget about those things too. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up here as best I can with this mirror. It's gonna be my biggest concern, making sure all my gaps and lines, and then that should cause the rest of it to line up. But you get a pretty good gauge when you look at your corners, top corners in that center mirror. Hashtag no gap. That should be pretty good. And then as you're squeegeeing it out, obviously pay attention because it's going to shift a little bit on you. If it's slidey. And oh, it's a little slidey. But yeah, <laughs> like, I, uh, it's, it's tough for me on, on the, on the subject of plotters. And like, honestly, window phones too. Everything kind of plays into this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people that will hype certain things up and then you get them and you're kind of like, oh, well, this isn't as good as what everybody kind of made it seem like it was, right? But to them, it really is amazing. So, or at least they make it seem like that. So like, any time that I'm like, hey, plotter lets me down on cut sometimes, I'll hear a lot of like, people backing him up. So, and then when I'm positive about it, like, I don't want to just pretend like they don't have their issues. So I always try and talk, to the, talk about them as objectively as I can, because you are going to run into those issues. but. When you first get one, you can learn to work with it, and it'll generally be better if you really understand where its strong suits are, and also what type of shop are you. How's gas prices? Uh, they've come down a little bit. We've always been, I'd say, fairly decent on gas. So pricing has usually been um, like two fifty to like three dollars on the high side. That's like pretty normal for us. Um, then they spiked up to a high of like I saw I think five fifty at the peak, and at some gas stations it's kind of settled back down to five or a little bit above five. There's like a mile down the road. It'll change from like it would change from like four ninety nine to like five thirty, but four ninety nine is kind of the the low right now. Spent a hundred dollars filling up the Blazer. It's a vehicle that I would not have thought I'd have to spend much gas on at all. And then when I got it, I was like, oh, this thing sucks down way more gas than like my Explorer only took sixteen gallons. My blazer takes like 19. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Uh, not soon. 
unfortunately. I can, it's more expensive and through another store, but I can recommend you a really good alternative that I like using. Uh, it's called the Fusion Shorty. It's a black handle. It fits all the squeegee blades great. Uh, I think it runs like 25 bucks though, but it's an amazing handle. It'll last you forever. So you can, uh, Sun Distributing has those, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that, but yeah, those, those are honestly a better choice. <laughs> Um, it's going to take a little while to get them. It's just uh, shipping issues right now. Oh. Uh, yeah, in the Metro Detroit area. Yeah. Um, so believe it or not, uh, hit up Symbol over in Shelby Township, if that's not too far for you. They... Yep, 23 mile. They are, dude, they've got, that's a place I used to tint for. Um, their tinner previously, like I left there um, to start this place and then they found another guy and he just recently quit. He wasn't working out there. So they have a long time tint program. They generally sell jobs for about, I don't know, 300 bucks without a windshield. Um, so they have, they have pretty good pricing. I think they need to, you know, they're, they're a glass shop. You got to work with them a little bit. But all in all, they have a really established business, a good program. They're just looking for a qualified tenor to, to fill in at least a couple days a week. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, they would be. Sure, sure, I hear ya. Uh-huh. Right. Well, yeah, but that was that was the, the fresh lead, and then right now, um, I don't know of anybody in particular. Um, there was somebody over in, um, God, what was it? I think Lincoln Park um, uh, that was looking for a tin or two. If I can think of their name, I'll text you. Uh, but they were looking, they're, they're a tint shop. They were looking for additional help. So that's kind of a good alternative, too. A lot of shops around this time usually are. So yeah, if I think of anybody, I'll text you. Yeah, no problem. OK, yeah, man, sounds good. It was good talking to you. Yep, have, have a good one. Nice. Dang. <laughs> I, I was like, so um, I had to stop by Symbol um, on Wednesday. They have, like I just said to that one guy, they have a tenor that didn't well, work out because he just, I don't know, work ethic and, and also he just randomly quit, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to go out there and fix a handful of jobs that he did, um, just a handful of door windows and stuff. There was supposed to be more, but some people couldn't schedule for that particular day. So I go out there, take care of a couple of things. Um, but yeah, their symbol over in Shelby, they're looking for a tenor. They, they were the last place that I tended for before I started this. I still think they're a good opportunity. Lots of front doors, um, especially front doors. But they've got they sell full cars and trucks all day long. They'll sell windshields. They'll keep you busy, um, especially when they have a consistent person that they can trust. Um, yeah, yeah. There were very few days I would go in on, like I'd set them up for like a Tuesday and a Friday. I would go in on a Tuesday and a Friday, um, and they would keep me busy all day. There are some days we get really frustrated because we don't always see eye to eye, but it's uh, <laughs> people that don't do tint versus people that do tint, and they never see eye to eye, I've found. But 
they were always uh, they were always really good people. Just can't say that about every sh every uh, shop that I've tended for. I mean, that's pretty much like auto accessories companies. <laughs> you should stock that shower squeegee. Somebody's got to. This is some. This is a job for for sun distributing. But you know, maybe we can do it. I don't know if I have to like carry a whole Libin line. So I've been uh, I've been watching some of uh, Obsessed Garage's channel lately, and I always appreciate to hear anybody talk about business, at all. Any halfway successful or very successful business person, I always like to hear perspectives on it. Um, and so he would he always had this problem with companies where he would have one, two, or three things that he'd want to pick up from the company, but the company wouldn't sell it to him because they want to sell their whole lineup and he wasn't interested in carrying their whole lineup. He's just like, no, most of this is garbage. These things are amazing though. And I can very much, very much appreciate that sentiment. Let me just use this one. I've had some problems with dirt around mirrors. What's your recommendation there? Man, I tell you, I've been trying to sort that out myself. And there's some that go really, really well. And there's some that unfortunately don't go so well. I just keep trying to do them better. So wiping around the mirror, squeezing a couple extra times. And the way that I set up my whole reverse roll, um, squeezing underneath the film, squeezing over the film, has all been... What would be a qualified tinter? Okay, so they're looking for somebody, like the, the guy that I talked to, he was looking to get back into tinting and that's where like I should have asked <laughs> that part first, but um, sounded like he already knew how to tint. He just been out of tinting for a while. One sec, there's one, one thing I'm gonna take care of. But when you go, so going into like symbol, they'll, they'll give you, they can give you a relatively light day as long as you can put out some good work. So if, if, if you can only do one or two full cars in a day and some clean doors, you'll be fine. They can book more and they will try and book more, but you also got to look at it from their perspective too. They're tying, you're tying up their space all day. So they want it to just make sense for everybody. They want to know that when they pull in somebody, they're going to get a good job. They know that you're going to come in when they schedule a job, like on the days that you say you're going to come in, you're going to come in. Um, and I'd say you could at least handle a couple cars in a day. Stuff like that. There's this guy right here. Let's just turn it right here. Oh, no shit. Well, that makes my life easier. Here, I'm thinking film. It's glass. There is something down there on the glass that I didn't, I guess I just lightly missed. Oh, that's so much better. I was looking for a little speck in the film. The film's clean. <laughs> Always touch the glass too. It's just something bigger. So, like, what was that thing? There was a little, there was like a, a more noticeable speck. So when you sat back here and you're driving, you're looking right out here, there is a speck there that it's like, that was pretty, like you could see it was there from a distance. I'm gonna wanna take care of that.
if that same spec was over in a lower corner all the way on the other side of the car and it was really hard to get to because the dash is tight, I'd probably leave it. Like those are the level of differences there. Like am I going to make the window look worse by trying to fix it? Is it really noticeable? So it's kind of scrapping the whole thing. If I don't take care of this, like what are we dealing with? It honestly wasn't that bad. But when you see the rest of the window turn out so nicely, then you go, well, dang, everything except like, uh, just take care of that one thing. I don't know what I should do. I shouldn't have put that sprayer over there. What's the most amount of full cars you've tinted in a day? Eight to five? Eight to five? I don't start at eight. I start at nine. Nine to six. <laughs> Actually, there were some days that I had to come in at like eight, eight thirty. It was even hard to come in at nine. I start right now at ten. Okay, so there's like most amount. Um, it's probably been seven cars in a day with like probably a windshield or two mixed in there. So that's that's like all sides and rear. Generally no windshield is on is what I would consider. Like now I consider that for like a full car. But as far as more often than not, like full car, sides and rear, and then windshields is kind of additional. There's some people that go, oh, I got 13 cars done. And most of them were like front doors. And oh yeah, it's a car. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. No, that's, that's quicker in and out work. All right, last little bit here. A good average, what I'd say, busy, was it plotter cut or hand cut? No, no, I'm, it's, it's hand cut. That's a busy day. And that didn't happen hardly at all. That was just one of those like, all right, let's go. You got extra cars, things are going good. Most of them were fairly straightforward. Let's just keep this ball rolling, something like that. That's where I've been like, I've been tinning for like 15 years at this point. So I've definitely had some days like that where it's just like, man, I don't know what happened. We got a bunch of cars coming in. All right, let's get them done. I mean, that kind of situation happened right on stream really that one day. There was like a day that I was at Symbol and it was kind of just like, go, go, go. You get cars done inside of an hour. So 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So seven cars, eight hours. Yeah, you can do it. Put about an hour per car, have a little bit of extra time. Uh, if something goes wrong and pull something in and out. But is that like as much attention to detail as this car just got? No. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely a handful of days where that would have happened. Um, a regular busy day for me was more along the lines of like three to four full cars. Four cars was definitely more busy, but you plan for two hours per full car. Anytime you're going over two hours, Anytime you're going over two hours, you're wasting time at, at a shop like that. So sides and rear should be able to be done inside of two hours. And then an extra like half hour, 45 minutes for the windshield. So there was a lot of times that cars balance, and balance themselves out. So let's say one of those was an Audi. Audi's gonna take me a little bit longer. Oh look, another one's a Malibu. Malibu's gonna be quicker. So I'll spend longer on one and shorter on another. And then the day kind of balances it, balance itself out. So three to four cars, uh, full cars, and then you have like a handful of front doors um, and usually 
there would either be a, a windshield or two on the set of doors or the full car. But yeah, it's, uh, it's go, go, go. I don't, I also wouldn't um, take lunch breaks either. Lunch breaks were a waste of time. Uh, they'd like slow you down. <laughs> like you feel heavy after you take a lunch break. So earlier on I was like, ah, oh, no lunch break. And then later on I was like, ah, oh, I don't wanna go and get food. I just like, if there's something here, then I'll be more than happy to like snack on something while it's here, but I'm not gonna go get anything. That's just a waste. At my dad's shop, it was often like, for me, I'd consider like punishment. <laughs> like whenever he got lunch, he'd be like, yay, lunch. And you usually get like pizza or something on Saturdays. He'd buy lunch for the shop every Saturday. It was a super nice thing to do. But then, like, you sit down, you eat, and then they don't stop taking appointments. So then when you're done eating, there's extra work for you to do, and then you feel like you just lost out. <laughs> you're like, damn. I get it. I'm behind now. Is that why you didn't stream that one week? You were doing tint? No. Uh, it was just a weird week. So, like, we taught the class. Um, then, the like, this week, um, I actually had... This appointment was supposed to come in on Tuesday, and the schedule just got mixed up. So I, <laughs> I rescheduled this job accidentally, um, thinking that this client was somebody else, and then I set the schedule back to the way it was. But then I remember the way that I talked about the schedule. It was just confusing. <laughs> so. So he thought he was going to bring this one in on Wednesday. Um, this was actually scheduled for Tuesday. And actually, Tuesday was that day we shot that video instead. So like, I took advantage of that time. Um, and then Wednesday, I got a call from my Thursday appointment. And he said, he's like, hey, man, unfortunately, somebody in my family passed away. So I'm not going to be able to make my appointment. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to reschedule it for. It's like, yikes, no worries. Sorry to hear that. So like Wednesday, it was I was at Symbol for half the day, and then I had like a windshield and front doors, so I didn't stream that. And now we're back today with more of what I would say is a more normal schedule. Just a crazy schedule. Yep, things, things pop up and cancel and change. <laughs> um, that's good. That's good. Oh, the card. I think the thing went to sleep again. <gasps> oh. Hang on. Ha, ha I pushed the towel off, and then I pushed the card off. There we go. So now these should, these should roll back down. What do you think about premium carbon tint? Um, carbon tint's great. The darker you go, the more heat that it's gonna block out. Um, but it's a way to keep costs down and still block out some heat. So at its max, like you're looking at 5%, you'll be able to get some pretty strong numbers. Up from there, 20% um, you get about 50% heat reduction. So it's kind of like a really nice sweet spot. A lot of people get 20%. So it's a good way to save some money and still block some heat. That's the main difference though. Ceramic, carbon, dyed, the... Uh, Main difference is always gonna be heat rejection. People talk about clarity and all this other stuff. When you spend more on a good ceramic versus a cheap ceramic, you can block out heat with both, but a good ceramic is gonna 
be clear and last longer. A cheap ceramic is hazier. The back looks like 5%. It's gonna be similar. Um, it's the it's 35 over the privacy. So you're a little darker, um, but not quite as dark as limo. And that's what we were looking for on this one. Make sure that's closed. Cool, cool. Nice. But yeah, really nice film choices on this one. Like I said, I, I appreciate 50% in ceramic. Does Global do 80% tint? Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not super familiar with Global. But the latest that I can get from Geo is uh, is 70. But I mean, it would be nice to have one lighter option. But as far as what I practically get asked about, like 70s, like if you don't want a tinted look, do 70. It sounds like it. The thing is, like the thing that I've noticed really about 70 is that it doesn't add color. It doesn't add that black color to your windshield. So it essentially looks like it's not tinted. Where 50 adds color. And so 50 doesn't add like a big amount of tint to it, but it adds that color to it. And depending on the angle that you're looking at makes the whole windshield then appear darker. Like this, 50. I can see clearly to the, the seat, but with the lighting and the camera and everything, it probably looks a little bit more enclosed. Like I, that's what I really like about 50. It adds this color to the windshield. And then the contrast that you get from the sky. Um, it kind of pops out a lot more, adding some like, like the illusion of privacy without actually making your windows like significantly darker. This turned out so nice. I'm really proud of this windshield, man. I'm glad to see that we didn't have any major hangups on this one. So let's go ahead, pack this part down, make sure. After these set, after any frameless door set, any windows, I always let them, like I'll, I'll run a triage or something along the bottom, just seal in that edge before I do something like that, just to be sure. Ooh. So if I'm looking straight through, like this is not super tinted. That's, that's the point of 50. But the rest of the cabin is tinted, so, and the seats are black. The only thing I can really see is gonna be like the pillar here. The pillar is, is lighter. And then same thing for the windshield. You're looking like right into the cabin. So when you're looking in the front, it gives you kind of like the illusion that it's darker. But then you squat down and look at the sides and you can like, this is what he was going for. He just, he didn't want to make the front look dark. That's 50. It's that, it's that in my opinion, that perfect sweet spot between you want some tint, but you don't want to go, it's tinted. That's 50. Whew. <laughs> Man, I think this head strap worked out better. I tightened it up a little bit, but it definitely like when you're, when I'm done a full car with the windshield, it's, it's a project, man. But this one, I'm really proud of this one. This one went well. All right, all right. Okay, so 
let's recap. So let me refresh this and see if anything significantly changes. Super. Hey. Weeks. Oh, I know you. You were here. Meeks 419 super shatted nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Aw, no message with that? Thank you. Meeks with the 10. Really appreciate that. He attended the class. Thanks, man. I hope things are going well. Okay. On this one. So it had what, 90? And now we're at 102, so it's a small, small improvement. No more tint tickets. I'm wondering, you could do no more tint tickets with this window tint. <laughs> it's a little redundant. Might be worth the change to have window tint. No more window tint tickets. Or I like no more tint tickets. I think it's still good, but it's going to be interesting to uh, to watch. It looks like it, so it could be because I'm live. I don't know, but it looks slightly improved. Not a huge difference yet, but I'll I'll let it I'll let it simmer and see if I can refine this one a little bit more. I'll let you know if I changed it. Where's the details? So this is the video too. I'm sure you guys have already seen it, but try and bump it up even more. I recently oh Meeks. Uh, I recently got a job. I uh, recently got a job working for a tin shop, thanks to you, Matt. Dang! Oh, that's super cool. Congrats, man. That's awesome to hear. I hope it goes. I hope it goes well for you. That's cool. I appreciate that a lot. That's what everybody that comes here to the class. I mean, all you guys, whether you come here or not. It's nice to hear. It's nice to hear how the channel helps. Walmart tint saving you from tickets. Ooh. Oh, I'm gonna play around with that one. That is that is strong. Walmart, cause you put Walmart tint saving. Walmart tint saving you from tint tickets. It's pretty. It's pretty strong. It's on the list. May I ask how much you're making with YouTube videos and lives? If you can tell us, um, yeah. Here, let me uh, let me pull up. I don't know where where it got out there that you couldn't share your revenue, but I was definitely like apprehensive for a long time too. Oh, can I, dude? This is super cool. I don't know if you guys ever see like. Uh, like the maker channels, like William Osmond and a couple other ones. They did, uh, Pan did one on Michael Superbacker, and Michael Superbacker subscribed to my channel. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was, I'm pretty proud of that one. Let me, let me get over here really quick, though. Analytics. So it varies. It's definitely, um, it's definitely a nice boost, but the the thing about a YouTube channel and views is like you're you're always dependent on your views. So when you have lower views and you're still putting a lot into your videos, that really sucks. But you gotta basically structure your business so it's not dependent on views. And that was something that I didn't that I was trying to do much earlier. I was just trying to make a very successful channel. Um, but really you should have something that helps support it outside of just ad revenue. Ad revenue is, is, is just should be a bonus. Um, so as far as that goes, 
this is the last um, little bit here. Oh, there's a super chat. Hang on, I'll go back to that. Nick Doolin with a five. Thank you. Fog machines and all. Nick Doolin super chatted $4.99. Have a buddy of mine who is planning on attending your classes soon. D, we both have learned so much from you. Um, Nick, thank you so much for the five. I have a buddy of mine who's planning on attending your class soon. We both have learned so much. Dude, I really appreciate that. That's super cool. Yeah, looking forward to having him here then. Is that revenue monthly or weekly? That's, that's monthly. So let me go back to that. I just want to say thank you so much for the super. So I was really, like Linus Tech Tips did this too, and I was really happy to see how their revenue stacks up with their videos and their CPMs and stuff. So there's a lot of factors that play into your, your YouTube revenue here. Um, so last month was like 3,000. Oh, this is showing me the videos that were published that month too. Will it just, there we go. Okay, okay, there we go. So like last month, oh, this is this month so far. Okay, so it's a little lower this month than the previous month before it. So you can see it goes up and down. I've got some, like this month was a, was a killer month, man. I was stoked in August and September. Um, so when you make a video or a couple that really hit, that'll make your entire month. And then you have residual views from everything else posted on the channel. And so those like staple videos are always kind of getting views. Um, but when I make a video like, like this one, I'm really going for entertainment and views. I, I want this video to do really, really well. So I'm gonna try and do whatever I can to tweak the title, tweak the thumbnail a little bit, try and get it to do better because this has every potential of being one of those videos. Um, a lot of the other videos that I post, um, so we go back to like content here. So like this one, this one, this is more for like when you're really trying to learn and I'll try and tweak the titles and the thumbnails some to try and get them to do better but they're not going to perform at the same level that these videos are. They're just not as broad. Um, so this video actually did way better than I thought it was going to do, but windshields are, are usually like a slam dunk uh, if they start doing well. And if we break into the analytics of this one a little bit, you can see it did, it did pretty well, and then all of a sudden it just took a major boost. I didn't even change anything. I don't know what happened. It just YouTube was like, all right, everybody wants to watch it now. Um, but the watch time, so $400 off of that video, 500,000 views, that should have been way higher. The problem was people weren't watching this video for very long at all. This was one of those like voiceover edited videos. It's not like a YouTuber-y video. So people only watch this for a minute. That makes your whole uh, revenue on it basically drop. So if I had longer watch time on this, uh, 500,000 views, probably would have been like a thousand or more. So I forget what it is, but over a thousand, I think, would have been the difference if I actually put more work into that video. But lots of people clicked on it. So we look at the click-through rate. See, this one's still 12% click-through rate. That's what I'm trying to do for my most recent video. So we go back into this one. We go to analytics, click-through rate. And we can see it dropping, but now it's still early to tell, but this is better. This is much better. That's what I want to see more. Sorry, let me move this down a little bit. It's like 11, 10, 11. So the thing, like, YouTube, there's, there's support that comes from it. Don't get me wrong, but you can make more money just hinting, <laughs> honestly. Like putting a lot of work into videos and, and stuff, but having, there's always the potential for it to scale up by, by a lot. Um, and it does that, but it's always constant work that you're putting into it. So it's, uh, yeah, I can definitely talk, talk quite a lot about it. It's, it's a nice boost and sometimes like a significant boost at the end of the month. 
um, but is not it's not the whole business. Just depending off of the just going off of the ad revenue. So whether or not you have a hundred subscribers or a hundred thousand subscribers, the views is what really matters. And when you're not getting lots of views, you're not making money. Um, but you can make money in other avenues. So that's like I really appreciate you guys uh, picking up Glass Aid stuff from the store. Um, having having the sponsored supporters, stuff like that, that all helps um, keep everything going. So thank you. I appreciate it. So with that, we're going to shout out some super chatters. So big shout out to Nick, Meeks, Nick, Ty, RGC, RGC, uh, Jacob, RGC, Robert. Thank you guys so much for all the support today. I greatly appreciate it. Maybe I can support you. I learned so much from your videos, especially your live streams. So very thankful for your channel. Maybe I can support you more in the future. Oh, don't don't even like don't even worry about it necessarily. Like I I always appreciate that. Um, and obviously like super chats are great, but just hanging out, watching the streams, being part of the community, like that's first and foremost, but this is what I really, really value here. Um, so just hanging out and being a part of it, more than happy to have you here. I try and get to whatever questions as I can. Hope your day is going well. Do you recommend as a beginner tint film that is not really expensive to practice on? Uh, to, yeah, go to Tint Depot. Tint Depot's got some good options. Check out some of their films. Um, so if I go to, and then I gotta hop off here, I gotta deliver this car. Um, so if we scroll down here, I'm on their film page. So their one ply uh, films, I would shoot for something that's just a little bit thicker. The one plies are going to be kind of tissue papery. They'll be like their films used to be this thin. Now most of them are going to be one and a half mil, uh, a little bit thicker. Um, go for something like go for the charcoal. I would I would pick up like a roll like this. Um, Unless the price hasn't like significantly changed, thirty six by one hundred. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Here. Also, this stuff too. It's gonna be right in the same lineup. Inflation, man. Oh wait, no, no. Uh, Helios. Uh, Helios Orbit. What's their film? This is gonna be right in line with Pro Classic. Uh, a little bit cheaper. 185 for a roll, 36 by 100, get that. Cheaper films, cheaper films seem to be getting more expensive. Also, Lex and Pure Max, I hear people saying, get, if you get anything, get the Pure Max. Uh, I just keep getting it hammered down my, my ugh, I just hear it all the time. So I hear that one shrinks better, I don't know, I should try it, um, but yeah. That might save you some money, too. My name is Dan, if that's easier to address. It is, instead of calling you Christ. <laughs> Feel a little weird about that one. <laughs> My brother's uh, name is Dan, too. All right, you guys. I got to take off here. I got to deliver a Tesla. Um, thank you all for hanging out today. I appreciate you. We'll be back soon. Um, what, tomorrow is another day. So I'm guessing tomorrow. <laughs> it's all good. All righty, you guys have a good one. Bye.